inflated. The opening tip is brought to you by Alpha Graphics. Yesterday's tradition, today's technology. Design, copy, print, relationships. Noel Felix and Kurt Snyder in the center circle. We are underway the tip to Fresno State. Oh, I thought he'd come out firing and right off the curl. And Damon Jackson shoots so well when he gets it like that off the curl. When he spots up, he is dynamic. Already matched his high from last Saturday's game at Creighton. Two points. Body foul on Noel Felix. That's a tribute to the strength and ball handling ability of Snyder, who took it to the basket. Noel did a smart thing. He backed up, but Snyder bodied up against him and was able to draw the foul. Snyder to inbound. Gets it into Sean Paul. One of the Hill Thomas. He had 26, remember, when they played in Reno. Back up, John. Back up, John. Hand release. In and out to Manby for the rebound. He was out of bounds. Just... Havis does. He just makes plays with effort. Well, the foul early. You have to watch him. He's been in foul trouble in many games this year and had limited minutes against the Wolfpack the first time around because of foul situation. Oof. And Paul, he turns, fires, can't get it to go. Felix skies for the rebound, deflected. Rebounds by Snyder. Oh, was deflected. He thought he was at the offensive end. Clark basketball, Felix rebounds to Rolando Todd. 2 nothing. Fresno State just underway here. That's Shellen Arena. Well, this fans, this base. Fans are really into it. You want to explode with every. Uh, they're hoping for celebration. For Fresno State, the Bulldogs win the regular season whack title for the victory. Media and coach, the fifth best team in the conference. It'll be quite an accomplishment for Ray Lope. Can hurt the Wolfpack. The key for him tonight is to stay on the floor because of his leaping ability. Like Hiram Fuller, they can have their way against the Wolfpack, who are not strong defensively inside. Felix had a strong offensive game at Creighton, but ironically, never in his career has he scored in double figures against Nevada. Strong guard. Oh, on the other side of the floor, Rolando Todd will be whistled for his first foul as Fuller was starting to make his move to the hoop. You know, battle on the boards, too. These are two good rebounding teams, and I think that's going to determine a lot of how this game uh, ends up playing. And early on, it's Fresno State that's getting the ball off the glass. Statistically, Nevada is the top rebounding team in the WAC right ahead of Fresno State as Penny spins, fires, and drops it in. Well, he's, been, four. he's been a good player for them. And since the start of conference, he's been a starter and has really fortified the point guard position for the Wolf. <laughs> Breaks the 4-4 tie with the first. Hasn't started in a while. He's been coming off the bench. And senior night, he's back in that side.
Two out of three. Felix fighting for the rebound, but it goes to the Wolfpack. Snyder has it. Bulldogs lead by four. Back to foot. Fans wanted the turnover. Didn't get the call. Okasin now gets it back to Snyder. Got to watch Okasin. He's a 50% three-point shooter. He has... Snyder stepped on the baseline. No basket. Turnover. Fresno State has it. Boy, they're beating Snyder early. They want to get him off knowing full well he had a poor game the first meeting against Fresno State. Snyder averages 15 points, 8 rebounds a game for the Wolfpack. Pass by Todd, picked off by Petty. Drops it ahead to Okerson. Heath leads it to Hill. Thomas, who lays it up and in. Nevada has its first lead. That was unselfish basketball. If you turn the ball over and you allow Nevada to break, they'll burn you. There's a classic example. In the open court, they're very good. Pass taken by Sean Paul. Terry Pettis will check in for Fresno State. The next opportunity. Walking foul on Travis Demandy at the other end. Yeah, as soon as Rolando Ty turned the ball over and that triggered the fast break and the deuce, you had to think in terms of Terry Pettis. But here's what Kirk can do. Kirk Snyder. He just put the ball on the floor. That was a close call. The Mavi not quite set a good call. Travis sliding over there a little tardy. But Snyder's ability and strength to put the ball, the rock on the floor, and take it to the basket is giving Fresno State trouble early in this game. Terry Pettis, Jonathan Woods in for Rolando Todd and Noel Felix. <laughs> Off the bench, put it up for 21, and he's scored over 1,500 points. Quite a score. Off the bench, fires up the outside shot. Rebound comes off to Damon Jackson. The Bulldogs for the comes off. Travis has been shooting well of late his last four ball games. He's been really lighting it up from distance. Okerson wasn't looking for the pass from Green. It's out of bounds. The Bulldogs will have it when we come back, trailing by one. Something smells good. Lunch is almost ready, Jared. Hey, John. New today. Glad you asked, Mr. Fogel. Right now, we've got Lloyd's Barbecue Chicken Sandwich. Shredded barbecue chicken smothered in Lloyd's Barbecue Sauce on fresh baked gourmet bread. Only six grams of fat. Jared. 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 Wake up. Same dream? Same dream. Subway is fresh. If variety is the spice of life, then you'll want to live it up at Table Mountain's all-new, all-you-can-eat Mountain Feast. Enjoy our seafood extravaganza every Wednesday. On alternating Tuesdays, try our Asian buffet or our Mexican fiesta, American favorites too. Plus, don't forget our delicious Sunday brunch. It's full-service buffet-style dining, now open seven days a week. So bring yourself and your appetite to the all-new Mountain Feast, only at Table Mountain. Gilmore Gilmore, hopeless romantic. I love you, you idiot. Gilmore Girls Beginnings. Sunday night at 7 on WB59. Fresno State basketball is brought to you by Herwalt Motors Mercedes-Benz Center. Value unlike any other. By Comerica Bank. We listen, we understand, we make it work. In the Fig Garden Financial Center. And by Lithia Motors. We're driving America. Tonight at 10, join Eric Alvarez and Allison Riddell with Brendan Conway on sports. George Mason with the weather. It's the KMPH 10 o'clock news. The Valley's only primetime newscast. Only on your station, KMPH, Box 26. Fifteen thirty-eight to play in the first half. Fresno State with the basketball trailing by a point. I have Nevada. And Woods to inbound. Terry Pettis with the basketball. Bulldogs just two of four. Only four shots. Well, Nevada has gotten off seven. Bulldogs have turned it over three times. Lob goes inside to Fuller. Great pass from the Major. You're right. It was Major that made the play, throwing it up over the top. And again, Hiram Fuller is bigger and stronger than any of the Wolfpack inside and should have a big game. 
Fresno State edges back in front by a point. 7-6 Bulldogs. It has been fun to watch the maturation process of Hiram Fuller over this year. He has really come on. Snyder, no good. A bounce snatched by Jonathan Woods. Yeah, he showed some quicks getting over there and getting the ball. Jackson lobs it in. This is Fuller, defended by Sean Paul. One on one. Spins to the left. And the right hand. Bulldog did a nice job of clearing it out for Hiram Fuller. He just went on one on one against Paul and beat him. Fuller with two straight baskets. Fresno State now leading 9 6. Three. And Snyder can't handle it. Off his hands and out of bounds. Last couple of trips down court, Frank Johnson has seen Fresno State put the screws to his offense. Much tighter at the defensive end by the Bulldogs. Four pass by Pettis, but it's slapped right back to him by Snyder. And a pass deflected by Okerson. It goes to Gary Hill Thomas. Green will spot up and hit the two-pointer. Again, he's a great scorer. Over 1,500 points in his career the last three years. He's been the leading scorer for the Wolfpack. And he's the guy that comes off the bench and lights it up. Jonathan Woods dishes it off to Fuller. Double team, but he drops it off the glass and in. So Fuller has the last three buckets for the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs doing an excellent job of getting it inside to Hiram Fuller. And he is taking full advantage of his strength and height advantage against Sean Paul. Snyder behind the screen. Foot was on the line. It's a two-pointer. 11-10, Fresno State. Well, Kirk Snyder's come out with a purpose, knowing that he had a poor game against Fresno State. He is playing full throttle all out tonight. Jackson Davis Jackson. Well, that's what he does. He's just a great shooter, and, and you know he wants to play well tonight. Green contact and draws the foul. It'll be on Ronaldo Major, his first two shots for Green. Terrence Green. And Major got over there late. That's a good call. And Terrence Green will go to the line. He's the nephew of A.C. Green, the former NBA star. And like A.C. out of Portland, Oregon. Green, a 78 percenter from the free throw line this season. Fuller goes down. He's replaced by Noel Felix. Drop it'll, uh, it'll be interesting to see how long Noel Felix can stay on the floor without picking up another foul. He picked up one early. He's still got the one. He has to stay out of foul trouble. Green misses the second. And that's good. What a sweet shot by Noel Felix. Elevation for Noel Felix. He just lifted above everyone. And that was pretty with the left hand, wasn't it? Fresno State enjoys its biggest lead up by five points. Twelve and a half minutes to play in the first half. Green back behind the three-point line. In and out. Rebound taken by Major. Good job by David Jackson harassing Terrence Green. Inside. Instead, he'll fire. Doesn't get it. Rebound comes out to Noel Felix. Pettis, there's a mismatch, but the ball was deflected. He had Woods inside. Green with the steal. Puts it up and in. Smart play by Felix to let him go rather than take that second. Alan Green, when he's in the open floor and he takes it strong with the basket, he can finish. 16-13. Jonathan Woods trying to go to work on Brown, and he's out of bounds. Wanted drive, lost his balance, and was on the end line when he came down. The battle will have the basketball when we come back. 11.45 to play in the first half of three-point Bulldog lead. Okay, I've found the truck I've always wanted, but now I need financing. Question is, will I get a good deal at the bank? 
Why bank when you can join State Center Credit Union? You'll get a great loan rate and a low monthly payment, saving you a truckload of money. At State Center Credit Union, you can get free checking with unlimited free ATM access. Invest in yourself. Join State Center Credit Union at Sean Millbrook, one block west of Fresno State, open Monday through Friday till 6 p.m. We're in a climate here in the valley where you need a technician that's well trained in both heating and air conditioning, but there's a shortage of good trained technicians in this industry. You've got to have the education, the training. The more you know in this industry, the easier the work gets. What Institute of Technology is doing right now is really needed. If I had two young guys coming in to apply for a job and one's been to trade school and one hasn't, I'm definitely going to pick the one that's going to trade school. Call now and change your life. Make IT happen. On the WB's Big Sunday, it's your second chance to view two all-new WB dramas. First, in this room, a legend will unlock the secrets of Clark's past. Christopher Reeve. I've been expecting you. The small villain. And one year later, one last secret. You think I cheated on your mother? I know you did. Easy View Everwood, after Smallville. It all starts early. Sunday afternoon at 5 on K3 WB59. Coming up on the Herwald Motors Halftime Report, the Bulldogs' spotlight shines on Terry Pettis. We'll have Scott Johnson's AD report in the Enterprise Rent-A-Car first half stats and highlights coming up on the Herwald Motors Halftime Report. Ray Love's uh, got to be happy with the way his team is shooting the ball, but they're turning it over. Four turnovers from the uh, the point guards, two each from Pettis and Rolando Todd. They have to settle down and bring back that veteran Travis Demandy to join Pettis on the back line. Fresno State has turned it over six times in the first eight minutes and 15 seconds. Three turnovers for Nevada. The Bulldogs have hit seven of their first ten shots from the field. Carried it over. Jerry Petty turns it over. The referee right in front of him called the play, and it's Bulldog ball out of bounds. One thing the Wolfpack can ill afford to do is they can't turn it over on the road. When you're playing in a hostile environment, and not make those kind of mistakes. Felix inside the three-point line. He has his third bucket of the night. And he's playing with confidence. And he is a nice spot-up jump shooter. That's well within his range. And he had room to operate. And he took advantage. Again, a five-point lead for Fresno State. Snyder with the ball. A long three-pointer. He just didn't even worry about it. That was three feet behind the line. Yeah, he's got his game face on tonight. So he's going to be a load for Fresno State to try to handle. Kirk Snyder. Low pass for Major. It's tied up. Which comes out of the game for Fresno State. Hiram Fuller returns. Okuson is back in for Nevada. 54 out of 108 from three-pointers. That is 50% any way you look at it. Yeah, he hadn't taken a field goal shot yet. He hadn't even looked for the basket. Brown with the right hand. Tips up and in. Kind of just laid on the rim there and then dropped in. Dean Brown makes it a tie game at 18 all. Yeah, he gives them a little bit more athletic presence inside. Five unanswered points for Nevada. Pettis passes into traffic, but Brown with a foul. Boy, the second against the Wolfpack. So they're uh, not in foul difficulty at all. Just reaching out, trying to get that steal, and Brown came over the back, and that was an obvious infraction. Pettis out. Orlando Todd back in for head coach Ray Lopes. Now Todd will take the three. Rebounded by Brown. Well, they're doubling down on Fuller, so that shot is available. It'll be good for the Bulldogs if those point guards outside can start knocking it down. They'll take the pressure off of Fuller, and they will be forced to go back to one on one against him down on the low block. The bad news Todd, not a good three point shooter this year, under 25%, now 15 to 65. 
Green stutter steps, gives to Brown. Drives on Fuller. No basket, a foul before the shot. Hiram Fuller picks up the personal foul. That's his first personal. Five team fouls now on the Bulldogs. Quickness of Dean Brown putting the ball on the ground and going right by Hiram Fuller, who held him. Hill Thomas back in to replace Brown. Damon Jackson will check in for Fresno State at the next opportunity. Hill Thomas with a dish to Green for three. Rebound. Goes to Fuller. Gets it back to Major up ahead to Orlando Todd. Nevada back defensively. What a great play by Hiram Fuller to find a teammate in the open court. Now Fuller. Offensive foul. He had pretty good position on Oaks, but he gave him that little extra shove going toward the basket. Second foul on Fuller. Yeah, Hiram just trying a little bit too hard inside. And Oaks had the position. You'll see a higher on him. He's down low, and he knows he can overpower Oaks, and he just shoved him out of there. Although, as I look at it again, yeah, well, the as much contact as I thought. From our angle from the bench, though, you saw Oaks go flying. Fuller is out of the game now. Jonathan Woods back in. Green got open inside. Rebound put back by Sean Paul. Bulldogs inside players are coming out to help on the perimeter and have left the rebound available for Sean Paul. A 7-0 run for Nevada. The Wolfpack in front by two. This is Nevada's largest lead of the game. Jackson wide open for three, and he hits that. Boy, how did he get so all alone up there? Screen. They did a great job of screening off the defense of the Wolfpack and left Jackson open for the easy three. That'll be the second personal foul on Noel Felix. And that's not good news. Because that hurts the Bulldogs in numbers down inside where Nevada operates so very, very well. Sean Paul going to work, and Noel Felix... Picked up a lot of silly fouls this year. That was not a silly foul. That was a ticky-tack foul. Paul made his mind up as soon as he got the basketball that he was going to back in as he makes the first of the two free throws. We're tied at 21. Nevada's a good free throw shooting team. 72% from the line this year. They're the best offensive team of the West in terms of the Western Athletic Conference. They are just a tough team to stop. They have a lot of weapons offensively. Best offensive team against the best defensive team. We know how that worked out in the Super Bowl. Yeah, usually defense wins, and the Bulldog fans hope it's selling arena tonight. That's how it ends up prevailing toward the Bulldogs' favor. Fresno State, both of those threes by Jackson, and again, tied with a poor decision. The ball's turned over. Yeah, the point guard play has not been great. Okerson with a rare miss from three-point range. Side with a rebound. Demanby is open for three. Got to hit that, doesn't he? No, sure. Rebound. Okerson and Demanby battle for it. Off of Travis. Out of bounds. The battle will have it. Time out of the floor. 7.50 to play in the first half. A one-point lead for the Wolfpack. We'll be right back. Already know the Bulldog Brewing Company is the home of award-winning microbrewed beer. But did you know the Bulldog Brewing Company also has a great menu? There's fresh seafood, steaks, pastas, salads, sandwiches, and specialty dishes. Bulldog's pizza is made from fresh ingredients and slowly roasted in their wood-fired oven. The Bulldog Brewing Company is a great place to relax with family or friends, have lunch or dinner, get into the game on TV, or just kick back on the patio. Fresh beer brewed here. The Bulldog Brewing Company. Fresno. Livia customers always say it best. A lot of guys talk about personal service. Livia does it. They listened to my situation and worked with me. Our job is to help get you in the vehicle you need at the price you're comfortable with. I make sure you get the best financing available. I make sure you get the very best price in the valley. And I'll take care of your car after the sale. Great store to shop. Great store to work. Lithia Ford, your big Ford store. That's 41 in Bullard on Auto Center Drive. Behind the new Target. On the WB's Big Sunday, a two-hour job event. The seduction of the sea draws her near. There's nothing like being a mermaid. It's pure freedom. A choice between being a charmed one. She wants to be a mermaid because you broke her heart. 
life without feeling. It's everything Miley said it was. Baby, take my hands. I'm not going back. Charmed, a two-hour event. Sunday night at 8 on k 3 WB59. It's time now to announce the grand prize winner of the Subway Slam Attack, Stacy Speck of Exeter. She's just won a trip for two to the WAC tournament in Tulsa, courtesy of Subway Sandwiches and K Free WB59. Congratulations, Stacy Speck. There's a party and a lot of screaming going on right now around the television in Exeter. We'll see you in Tulsa two weeks from now. Actually, less than that. About a week and a half. Black tournament in our hurry. We're going to be in Tulsa on Wednesday. That's tonight. right. We've got a couple more games after this. Tulsa and Rice. And Tulsa's playing much better, and Rice is really coming on. So that's not going to be an easy trip for Fresno State. Or a strong drive to the hoop. Pinkney in the game. We talked about denying penetration, and they didn't do it there. And Pinkney's another solid player who's been injured with a thigh contusion, was not expected to play. I checked that. Pinkney's not in the game. That's got to be Gary Hill Thomas with the basket. It was Gary Hill. And a foul at the other end. I was thinking if Pinkney got in, that would give Trent Johnson another body that he does not really have available. Not only to the line. Major's ball handling skills, and he's bigger than Petty, and he's able to get up in the air, and then Snyder came over to try to help out, and he drew the foul. Major from the line this year, very good, 82%. Averages nine points, four rebounds a game. He's had double figures in five of his last six games. Career highs of 18 points and 11 rebounds for the junior. And he's played well in clutch situations. Really come in and given Fresno State a lift. In many, many games earlier in the year, then he became a starter. Noel Felix did a great job to get that rebound, then he was fouled. So the Bulldogs will have it. And that number 42, Sean Paul. Sean Paul picks up his first personal. Todd the inbound. See the Noel Phillips go up like that. You just shake your head with that kind of ability. He is wonderful to watch. Felix with a fake in the drive and a hold before the shot. No basket. Two quick fouls on Paul. Five on the tape. Remember the Wolfpack only had one for a long time. Again, Noel Felix has skills. We've seen him hit jump shots, and now you see him going to the basket, but he's playing with two fouls. He has to be very careful. Jackson gets the inbound pass, defended by Hill Thomas. Todd is picked up by Okerson. Major. This is Jackson. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Todd, though, let's go with the outside shot. Rebound to Brown. Lob ahead to Snyder, intended by Okerson, and about five feet over his outstretched hands and out of bounds. So the Bulldogs catch a break. Yeah, and Felix did a good job of getting back defensively, which forced that to be a perfect pass. Preston Smith's going to get Hiram Fuller back in the ball game. Well, already nine turnovers for the Bulldogs. They average 16 a game. Felix, Major, can't get it to go, but we're not going anywhere. Keep it right here, a foul on Nevada. Yeah, Ray looks to like that because that's effort on the glass, giving three boards and working hard playing above the rim. This is just about effort with Fresno State at the offensive end. A shot, a crash tip. Another opportunity is Woods went up strong and then they forced the foul. Good effort by Fresno State. Dean Brown picks up his second personal. Todd. Trying to get it in, lobs it into Felix. Turns, fires, needs a bounce, can't get it. Snyder with a rebound. The battle will reset. Bulldogs did a good job getting back defensively. Snyder. 
Throws it up and in. Boy, that's a tough defensive assignment for Jonathan Woods. Now you can't defend that. You know, when a player is able to fall away like that and hit that jump shot with that big body, there really is not anything you can do to defend him. Jackson, in and out. Rebound. Woods comes away with it. Will Donaldson get another shot? Woods has that elastic body. That thing was able to just, uh, just stretch to get that rebound. And this is what Fresno State does. Rebound. And, and they've been out rebounding Nevada in the last few minutes. Felix. Shoots it over Brown. He's playing with the most confidence I've seen this year. He is starting to look like he's getting back in form. Green at the other end. Tipped out by Snyder. It goes to Hill. Thomas over Felix. No. Offensive foul. And a lot of Bulldog fans had to hold their breath with Felix stationed in that paint and a body coming at him. And it's uh, very fortunate for Fresno State that he not pick up the foul and went against the Wolfback. Gary Hill Thomas picks up his first. Fresno State now with the basketball. Both teams with 17 fouls. Well, this has been a spirited effort by Nevada. They're not coming in here to let Fresno State win the championship. The Bulldogs are going to have to earn it. Demandy lobbed the pass and tried to get it over to Brown, and Brown was kind of like a, a football defensive back who wasn't paying attention, and he got tangled up with Fuller, and Brown picks up his third personal. He'll have to go to the bench. We talked so much about Noel Felix getting in foul trouble, but Nevada has the flip side problem, trying to handle Hiram Fuller and Noel Felix inside, and Fuller is a load for any of the Wolfpack defenders. Brown's only played six or seven minutes, picked up three fouls. Fuller hits the front end, earns the bonus on the one and one. He can tie it with this one. Hiram Fuller went from a question mark early in the season to a lock as a whack first teamer, I would imagine. He's, he has to be on the Western Athletic Conference first team ballot. He has been an all star down the stretch for Fresno State. Six double doubles this season. Makes both free throws. We're tied again. 26 all. And here comes the crowd. They're on their feet. It's good to see the fans back at Selling the Rain. Hocus and counter defensively. And the fans are having an impact. Well, Ray Lopes is upstanding, applauding his team in their effort defensively. Seven on the shot clock. Green. Hocus. Robs it up and in. Two-pointer for Okerson. Great shooters can always hit big shots. And Okerson is always dangerous, even with the clock running down. That was a magnificent shot. Fuller. Back out to demand. He gets it right back. Back in on Paul. Right-hander off the glass. Comes up short. Snyder with the rebound. Racing it down court. Boy, he was going to take it all the way to the rack. No one stopped the ball. Without committing a foul, Travis Demanby picks up the personal. He's got a linebacker body, but he is so good handling the ball. It's his ball handling skills that get him down the floor. And he's quick. He looks like he'd be sluggish at 6'6 and 219, but he's a gazelle and he can run. Your coach has talked about being able to run the floor. Well, Kirk Snyder can run the floor. Snyder makes it a three-point game, checking in for Nevada, Matt Oates, and London Wilson. Okerson and Paul go out. You can see why this guy was preseason all whacked by the coaches in the whack. He's a player. Perfect on both free throws. Again, Nevada with a four-point lead as we approach the four-minute mark here in the first half. Demandy <laughs> gets it in. Woods turns. One hand can't get that to go. Will Thomas with the rebound. Again, the Snyder sizes up the long three-pointer. Can't get it to go. Major with the rebound. Didn't need that shot. Too early in the shot clock. I think you get a better look than that, although it was Kirk Snyder who let it go. He hit one like that early. A deep three. Woods left-hander. Puts it up and in over Snyder. 
A soft touch that big Donovan Woods. Again, the inside game has been very good for Fresno State. It's been the perimeter that has been missing. 30 second timeout called by Nevada, the Wolfpack, leading at 30 to 28. Fresno State has not lost this year, Randy, when leading at halftime. 15 and 0. 4 and 6 when they trail. So take a look at the shot by Woods. Backing in on Snyder. Yeah, just that soft touch. And on the baseline, Jonathan Woods uh, is money in the bank. A two point game. Nevada with the lead at 30 to 28. Fresno State out rebounding the Wolf back 13 to 12. 13 and 1 at home this season. And there you see the all time record for Fresno State at Stellan Arena. Bulldogs, by the way, this year have not lost two games in a row all season. They're coming off the defeat at Creighton. Yeah, the one loss at home was to Louisiana Tech, and Louisiana Tech not playing well now, but when they came in here, they were on fire. Ah, Louisiana Tech lost big to Boise tonight. Shocking. Boise State is not a talented basketball team. Rice was a winner over Hawaii. The Rainbow Warriors are struggling. Snyder with the shot rattles at home. Yeah, since the opening bell, he has been determined. And Snyder has showed us the entire package, driving it to the basket, hitting long-range bombs, and has been absolutely unstoppable in this first half. Love, Kurt, love it. Yeah, Ronaldo Major. Rebound, Ocas. Nevada with a chance to take its biggest lead. Terry Screen looking inside. Works around the screen, then he kicks it out. Terry Thomas from the baseline. And it's a six point lead. Ray Lopes wants a 30 second timeout. Again, Nevada has weapons. I mean, it's no accident that they're scoring because they're good at the offensive end. This is a test for Fresno State, even at home. Fresno State's getting pretty good shots, Randy. The Bulldogs uh, have been knocking them down. That's true. And it's been started out 7 to 10. Yeah, I think you know, the percentage is pretty good. They just have not had a perimeter to balance out the inside game, as you see my, some of the other scores from quick signs. And there's been uh, some good ones, though. You see that overtime win for Syracuse. Kansas over Oklahoma State. A little bit of a rivalry there. Florida, boy, look at the close one escaping at Auburn. Yeah, it's never easy to win on the road in any conference, obviously. You see Xavier uh, holding on to get one against George Washington. There's kind of a surprise, but, you know, New Mexico has a score by the name of Ruben Douglas, who leads the nation in scoring. And they're fully capable, especially at the pit. A&M over Oklahoma. That's got to be considered a shocker. Texas needs overtime. We've knocked out five nights. Red Rapes. Notre Dame. Another loss. That's two straight. Reminder, the scoreboard brought to you by Quicksigns. You can see the difference with Quicksigns. Pettis will pull up in here. Boy, the Bulldogs need it back. They've fallen down by their largest margin, six. Bulldogs only freshman, Terry Pettis. And he's played well of late, although he's been off to a slow start tonight. I would expect him to Calm down and get better and better as the game goes on. First first state needs a couple of stops. Green, short rebound comes out to Jackson. And Terrence is mad at himself. He had a good look at it. He just couldn't hit the shot. He thought he should make that. <laughs> Calling out the Duke play. We saw that at Creighton. There goes Pettis. Puts it up and in. Two straight baskets for the freshman. Well, Terry Pettis, when he penetrates, he's a very good offensive basketball player. And when you penetrate, positive things happen. And again, with those two baskets, the fans very much alive and selling. Woods battles for it. And a foul. Oaks and Woods were battling for the basketball. And Woods will be whistled for the personal. It's a one-and-one -one situation. Three throws for Matt Oaks. Matt Oaks, one-and-one. 
19 fouls on Fresno State. Oaks, one of the poorest free throw shooters on this Nevada team at 62% out of Sparks, Nevada. Ray Lope still hollering at Jerry White over that call. Not very pleased about it at all. I thought he got uh, bitten a little bit at home. Usually you get a call like that at home. Two guys going after the basketball. Yeah, I thought that should have been a no call rather than eight call. Felix with the miss. Or with the rebound off the miss. Snyder got hit in the face on the play. He's checking to see if there's any blood. Pettis has hit two straight, forces that one up and draws the foul. If you minute great, positive things happen. You know, here's a guy in Terry Pettis, a freshman who took over in the second overtime at San Jose State. He scored 10 points in the second overtime. So the pressure's not going to get to him. He was a little too excited at the beginning of the game. He's calmed down, he's under control, and now he's playing well. Pettis gets one more. Have a Zamambi out. Orlando Todd comes in. Also entering the game for the Bulldogs. Ronaldo Major for Noel Felix. So the coach gets Felix off before he can pick up that third foul. That's a smart substitution. You want to make sure he goes into the locker room with two. Pettis makes one of the two. Nevada can hold the ball for the last shot. Okerson gets the contact. Foul will be on Todd. Two shots. He was on the three-point line. Todd Okerson is a great shooter and thus a tremendous foul shooter as well. And he handles the ball better than a lot of people think. And he's a very animated guy. He was able to get Rolando Todd out of position with his ball handling skill. Okerson, 84% from line this season. With 9.3 seconds to play, a three-point lead for Nevada. I mentioned Fresno State's 15-0 when leading at the half. Nevada, 13-2. and Not too shabby. Timeout on the floor. 9.3 ticks left in the first half. Nevada has taken a four-point lead. The Bulldogs try and get some points before halftime when we come back. Imagine a business relationship with someone who shares your vision, your drive for success. A business relationship with someone who accepts your challenges and helps take you to new heights. An advocate and source of knowledge. The kind of business relationship you'd have with Comerica Bank. Offering experience and expertise that no other business bank can. With fast, flexible solutions and a staunch belief that you're the priority. Because at Comerica Bank, we listen, we understand, we make it work. Advertising is power. Turn it on. Armadillo Advertising. Meet us at BigDillo.net. On the WB Thursday, Sabrina's trapped with Squee and Shaggy. Let's go! Sabrina on a new night and new time. Then, kids, they can be so priceless. That sounded expensive. An all-new family affair. Plus, the victim, a man hypnotized. The shock, Jamie Kennedy. You don't hit me again, are you? A full-hour Jamie Kennedy experiment after an all-new family affair. Thursday night is paid on WB59. 
This week in Bulldog Sports is brought to you by CalFed Bank. Put a Bulldog in your wallet with the CalFed Bulldog Visa check card. Softball battle BYU Wednesday night before hosting Hendricks Hallowell Chevrolet Softball Classic Thursday. And your baseball team will host Cal Poly Tuesday. That opens a whack play against the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii this weekend at Biden Field. For tickets, call 278-DOGS or go online at GoBulldogs.com. This week in Bulldog Sports brought to you by CalFed Bank. Home of the CalFed Bulldog Visa check card. You're smiling over there on all those words I have to say in such a short time before they yeah, can get to you, play again, right? You got those out quick. <laughs> all right, the final seconds of the first half. Sit off, Terry Pettis. Takes it right to the left, and a player hanging on the rim. That's got to be goaltending. That's not quite basketball. Boy, that is really... That ball wasn't going to go in either. Now, the Bulldogs have to play smart. There's still nearly three seconds for Nevada to bring it up. And Oakerson will get a shot off. No, he won't. He dishes it off. That no, was there defensively. That really surprised me because he could have put it up in the air. So Fresno State will go to the locker room trailing, but just by two. Halftime at South Arena, 37-35, Nevada. Hey, where's your good neighbor going? Why are his good hands on the steering wheel heading out of town? I'm Manny Whitaker of Coppola's Reliable Insurance. We have offices up and down the valley, so we're part of your neighborhood. We'll get you covered. Here to help when others are leaving town. The WB for the Valley. K-Free, WB-59, Sanger, Fresno. Wish me luck. Oh, my God. Calm down. Oh, my God. You're making a spectacle. You're getting back together with Dean. What are you doing here? I thought you were trying to talk to me. I must have imagined it all, man. Don't go. Why? I love you, you idiot. Every Sunday on Beginnings, Gilmore Girls Beginnings. Sunday night at 7 on WB-59. On the WB Monday night, Lucy Camden is ready to get married. I love you, Kevin. But when Simon discovers a secret relationship... It's none of your business. Let's go. Lucy's future is in doubt. Is she pretty? Please, don't do this. Seven Heaven. Monday night at 8 on WB 59. Thursday, what's got Mr. French so frenzied? No good happens. Is it Sissy? Who took a ride she didn't pay for? Hi. Officer. Oh, Judy, for taking a ride someone else has to pay for. That sounded expensive. French's pain begins on Family Affair. Thursday night at 8.30 on WB59. Time now for the Herwolf Motors Halftime Report. Brought to you by Herwolf Motors, your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Value unlike any other. Time now, the Bulldog Shop Bulldog Spotlight. How can Terry Pettis be a freshman? He plays with so much confidence, so much leadership. He looks like a fifth-year senior. Where does that inner strength come from? Uh, it comes from my heart. I feel like um, I don't lack no confidence in any game and, and going out and playing hard. I feel like I can go out and play hard every game, and, and that's what I wanted to do. I mean, I just wanted to kind of have a good year this year, and, and it's going good for right now. But well, Terry's a mature young man, and uh, he's, uh, he, he's full of a lot of confidence. He doesn't lack for confidence, that's for sure. And uh, he's such a competitor. Over the last three games, Pettis has averaged 17 points, four assists, and most importantly, just one turnover. Not to mention his unbridled enthusiasm matched only by his coach. He's definitely a, uh, a darn near a mirror image of me when it comes to intensity and energy and enthusiasm. And, and that's a big reason why I recruited Terry. You know, I, I saw those intangible things about him that, uh, you know, I knew that I wanted in my program. When he told me when I got here that he wanted me to be just like him, and, and, and that's when I feel like I've, I've bought me a bond this season to be just like him on the court and whatever he's thinking on his head on the bench is what I got to be thinking on the court. Even though Terry Pettis plays like a senior, he is still a freshman and a true freshman at that. And at least one veteran on the team has to keep the kid in his place. Well, you know, he's still treating like a freshman. You guys, I treat him like a freshman every day. <laughs> like what kind of things do you do to him? You know, I beat him up, you know what I mean, all the time. I, I go beat him up right now. <laughs> These guys sort of know that, um, that, that I'm a freshman and that they, they really can't haze me anymore because it's, it's too late in the season. <laughs> You're already kind of a sophomore now. I'm really, I'm really like a sophomore now. <laughs> we'll visit more with Terry Pettis right after this. I got it. I got it. I got it. We interrupt this Bulldog Shop commercial for this special announcement. Say, I got it at the Bulldog Shop during their outrageous outerwear sale. Right now through the end of the month, save 30 to 50% off all outerwear at the Bulldog Shop. That's Bulldog jackets, sweatshirts, and pullovers. If it's outerwear, it's on sale. Hurry in so you can say, I got it. I got it at the Bulldog Shop. The Bulldog Shop, Peter and Barstow, across from all three stadiums. 
Terry Pettis has been a winner his entire career. In fact, he won three Minnesota state titles while in high school, and he's carried that winning attitude all the way to Fresno. Yeah, the winning attitude is the, probably one of the best things I brought to this team, and, and uh, the winning attitude is going to get us a WAC championship and get us to the NCAA tournament. I had ten losses in my high school career in four years, so you know I mean? I got six this year, so I don't plan to get too many more. Pettis credits a lot of his success to being able to practice against Shante Leggins, who will probably take over his point guard position next year. It makes it easier for the game to guard a point guard because you're playing against the best in practice, so how it makes it a lot easier to go out and just give it to all against another point guard when you got the best in the practice. I don't know what who's going to be what next year. You just can't, you can't, we can't predict next year. And, you know, he's a kid that obviously is going to get better as a player over the course of uh, the offseason. And, and uh, heck, he might uh, find his way on that court uh, at whatever position. When you read Terry Pettis' bio under hobbies, it says homework. Yes, Pettis takes as much pride in school as he does in basketball. Um, I take a lot of pride. Um, I, I was a 3.3 student um, this last semester, and I'm, I'm probably going to shoot for another 3.4, 3.5 beyond. Um, be pay, just to be on the beyond around me. I feel I take a lot of take a lot of pride in doing schoolwork. When I get back, I hate to miss school. I mean, when we go on road trips, I hate to miss so much school that when we come back, I'm, I'm, I can't miss a class. Sure doesn't sound like a freshman. I'm Dana Green with the Bulldog Spotlight. On the WB's Big Sunday, it's your second chance to view two all-new WB dramas. First, in this room, a legend will unlock the secrets of Clark's past. Christopher Reeve. I've been expecting you. A small Billy event. Then, one year later, one last secret. You think I cheated on your mother? I know you did. Easy View Everwood. After Smallville, it all starts early. Sunday afternoon at 5 on K3 WB59. Cock be on. Nappy comeback. So you guys dig it in the hole, huh? No, I'm heading to our underground lair. So by the way, I'm Batman. This Cosby Hilton finds an old school pal on the street. Where is he laying? Hilton Lucas. He's homeless, and Hilton might be too. I'm bringing him to the house because he called me crazy. I think you've lost your leg, Steve. Now you're just playing crazy. Next Cosby. We're joined by Athletic Director Scott Johnson to talk about, uh, well, about the old girl we're sending out tonight, Selen Arena, right? <laughs> Selen Arena, 35 years old. Um, you know, we have a contest going of what's the greatest game in the fans' mind that was played Selen Arena. My vote, and then what I hear is it's the leading vote already, is the UNLV game, 68-43 in 1984. And I started going back to look at what the uh, numbers were on that game. UNLV was ranked fifth in the country, the nation's leading scoring team, had not lost a conference game in over a year, and we beat them by 25. Has to be one of the top, if not the top, moments in Selling Arena. Individually, too, there have been some great players play basketball in that building. Oh, for the Bulldogs, you know, Higgins and T-Bone and Anderson and... Uh, you know, it goes, Will Hooker, I, I can't think of all of them. You know, Courtney Alexander put on great three years display, Chris Heron. Of course, can't forget Dominic Young and some of the things that I saw that they showcased him the other day, uh, the big road win over Utah. But, you know, we've had a lot of great players come through the program. Melvin Eli, can't forget about Melvin, what he's meant, our leading score, career score. So. And then uh, maybe the best visiting player I ever saw was Larry Johnson. And uh, proved it out in the NBA, I think. Also had some pretty good coaches on the sideline. Boyd Grant established himself. Jerry Tarkanian was already, already established. And now I think you got the coach of the year in the Western Athletic Conference this year in Ray Lopes. He's done a fabulous job. His staff has uh, just been exceptional. I think uh, from what we saw in the Creighton game, you don't go into a hostile environment like that and play as well as they did and, and not on all cylinders unless there's great coaching going on and chemistry on the team. And the win tonight clinches the regular season WAC Conference Championship. Huge it's the game. second time in 20 years here. Huge game uh, against Nevada. and We don't match up that well against them, and that worries us a little bit. But uh, they got a lot of ability. Uh, but I think we'll be up to the challenge. It'll be nice to win it at home. We'll have more after this. I got it. I got it. I got it. 
we interrupt this Bulldog Shop commercial for this special announcement. Say, I got it at the Bulldog Shop during their outrageous outerwear sale. Right now through the end of the month, save 30 to 50% off all outerwear at the Bulldog Shop. That's Bulldog jackets, sweatshirts, and pullovers. If it's outerwear, it's on sale. Hurry in so you can say, I got it. I got it at the Bulldog Shop. The Bulldog Shop, Peter and Barstow, across from all three stadiums. Welcome back. We're with Scott Johnson. Now to talk a little bit about the Save Mart Center and update on, uh, on that project. Well, we have over 13,000 seats committed next year already. So there's, uh, not counting the, the student seating, there's a little less than 2,000 seats available. So if you haven't gotten your personal seat license, you better hurry up. They are going fast. As you know, the suites are sold out. We have uh, 2,200 students are going to be in the arena, which is totally different from what we had in Selman Arena. The project is uh, on track, which is nice in today's environment, uh, on budget, which is good. And I think if you drive by it every day, you see... Lithia customers always say it best. A lot of guys talk about personal service. Lithia doesn't. They listen to my situation and worked with me. Our job is to help get you in the vehicle you need at the price you're comfortable with. I make sure you get the best financing available. I make sure you get the very best price in the valley. And I'll take care of your car after the sale. Great store to shop. Great store to work. Lithia Ford, your big Ford store. That's 41 in Bullard on Auto Center Drive, behind the new Target. In a time without law, justice is coming. The thing is done. Set throw down, boy. Every town has a tale. This one has a legend. Mal Kilmer, Kirk Russell. You tell him I've got it! Sunday afternoon at 2 on WB59. Welcome back to Selland Arena, the Fresno State Bulldogs' final scheduled game here at Selland Arena. Halftime, the Bulldogs are trailing 37-35 to as we take a look at the stats. Brought to you by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Pick Enterprise will pick you up. Phone 1-800-RENT-A-CAR. Shooting both teams, 14 of 26 from the field. Nevada just 12.5% from three-point range. One of eight, so the difference at the free throw line pretty much. 8-10 for Nevada, five of nine for Fresno State. Bulldogs are out rebounding the Wolf Pack. That's good news. Fresno State had not lost a game all year when out rebounding its opponent until last week at Creighton. And that was the lone loss, 16-1 and one now when they out rebound their opponents. They're four and six when they trail at halftime. And so Fresno State can have to try and come from behind at the break and rally in the second half for the fifth time. They trailed ten times at the half all season long. Individually, some of the stats here are kind of obliterated that we've gotten. But Kirk Snyder leads with 13 points for Nevada. Bulldogs have three players with eight. Noel Felix, Hiram Fuller, and Damon Jackson. Seven points for Terry Pettis. Nine turnovers for the Bulldogs to six for Nevada, as you saw on the graphic. And maybe a, the coach will address this when he comes out to talk, but maybe not the, exactly the kind of intensity that uh, he had expected or wanted from his team, and that could change. Let's go to Randy with Coach Ray Lopes right now. Coach, I know you want to try to slow down Kirk Snyder, who played big for Nevada in the first half, but I, I would imagine you told your ball club it's 20 minutes now to a championship. Yeah, we got 20 minutes, and what we have to do is play better defense this half, Randy. It's real simple with us all year long. When we defend people, we have a chance to win games, and we're hard to beat. You know, that team shot 54% in the first half, and we had no answer for Snyder, so we just got to gotta pick it up on that end of the floor. Well, best of luck in the second half, Kirk. Thanks. All right, let's go back over. Over to Ralph. 37 35 at the half. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights from Selling Arena, Fresno State. Turnovers. Story, as we told you, nine for Bulldogs. Terrence Green gets that one and takes it back the other way, puts it off the glass, and in for Nevada. Bulldogs had an early lead, but Nevada shot its way back into it. Gary Hill Thomas, who had 26 in the first meeting, drives it to the basket and puts it up and in. Well, Fresno State, Damon Jackson had the hot hand for a while, along with Noel Felix. And then down the stretch, it was Terry Pettis, the freshman. He came in and hit a couple of 
baskets on drives. He also had one on a, a goaltending call to close out the half. Jonathan Woods with a fall away over Snyder for two more for Fresno State. And that's where we stand. Bulldogs trailing by two at halftime. We'll be back to Selling Arena for the second half. It should be a great one. Don't go away. Do-it-yourself investing is just too risky. You need insight, expertise, and honesty guarding your financial future. Like a knight in shining armor, successful financial is there for you. I'm still on the job. Don't hesitate to give me a call. The WB for the Valley. K-Free, WB59, Sanger Fresno. On the WB Monday, Lucy Camden is ready to get married. I love you, Kevin. But when Simon discovers a secret relationship... It's none of your business. Let's go. Lucy's future is in doubt. Is it pretty? Please, don't do this. Seventh Heaven, then. He was a city kid who thought he knew it all. Until a small town changed his mind. Never would. After Seventh Heaven. Monday night at 8 on WB59. This has been the Herwalt Motors Halftime Report, brought to you by Herwalt Motors, your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Value unlike any other. Sellout crowd at Selling Arena waiting to explode, Randy, in the second half, hoping that the, this is the night that the Bulldogs will clinch that championship and get the top seed in the white tournament coming up in Tulsa. Yeah, but the plan a tough opponent. I mean, Nevada is not an easy out for Fresno State. They just match up really well, and the Wolfpack is scoring well, getting inside the Fresno State defense. And one of those keys early on was denying penetration, and Nevada's been able to break down the Bulldog defense, get inside. Coach Lopes talked about the, how this team matches up against. Fresno State, and he's been worried about it all week long. Take a look at some of the uh, records of head coaches. Right now, the new guy is at the top of the heat percentage-wise. That's pretty good, 13-1 and one in this building. Yeah, if Ray Lopes wins tonight, he's the greatest coach at Selland <laughs> Arena history. I, I, but uh, a lot of guys with a lot of good numbers. Boyd Grant, 87%. Jerry Sarkanian at 84%. Not too shabby either. And even Ed Gregory back in the early days. 66% uh, got it done. I remember the first game I ever did here was back in 72, 73. Ed Gregory was the coach. I came in as a college student at Cal State Northridge. And Fresno State put it to the Matadors by 20 points. But it was interesting. There was only 1,200 fans here at Selwyn Arena. They've come a long way. Better than 10,000 a night to complete sellout. The first game was December 3rd, 1966. Fresno State 79. UC Santa Barbara 59. So they opened the place. With a victory, the Bulldogs hope to turn out the lights with a championship clinching win. Second half is underway. Terry Pettis did not start the first half. He started in the second half at the point. Immediately, they dump it inside to Fuller. Right-hander comes up short. Felix tried to put back Snyder with a rebound. Cut off by Damon Jackson. Pass inside, though, to Hill Thomas. Who lays it up and in? What a beautiful pass by Kirk Snyder, who since the opening bell has just had the game face on. And in all facets, Kirk Snyder's been the best player on the floor for either team. Fuller again spins in his foul. Sean Paul will pick up the personal. That's his third, I believe. Yes, it is. Three on Sean Paul. Well, the Bulldogs may not have an answer for Kirk Snyder, the sophomore, who's so good, but Ray Lopes has an answer himself in the middle of Hiram Fuller because no one on Nevada can handle him either. I would imagine Fresno State will get the ball to Hiram Fuller. A lot of it is going to fall on Fuller in the second half, half yeah. the way it looks. Yeah, he's going to see the ball a lot. Coach, that's, about as, yeah, but that's about as calm as you'll see him the rest of the night. Yeah, but there's anxious moments. He knows that he does not want to go back on the road without that title. He wants to get it tonight. And that's been well short. Bulldogs down by four. Okerson gets it off to Petty. Nevada win brings the Wolf Pack within one game of first place Fresno State in the lost card. All off the glass. He just backed in on Fuller and put it up and in. This is their last road game. They get Tulsa and Rice at home, so they're thinking if they can steal the game here and with a little help, 
And some two uh, couple wins at home. Perhaps Nevada could still win this championship. Fuller gets it out to Pettis. 20 on the shot clock. Man still standing, waiting for Fresno State's first points of the second half. Bulldogs got to a slow start at San Jose State a couple of games ago. Pettis turned it over. No basket. He walked on the drive. That has made a statement early on in the second half. They've come out and they're putting it to the Bulldogs. Now Fresno State's going to have to answer. Usually for Raylo's basketball teams, it starts at the defensive end. They need a defensive stop. Bill Thomas surveying the defense. Backs it out, gets it to Jerry Petty. Nine on the shot clock now. Nevada goes into motion. Petty tried to get it through Snyder. Steal by Fuller. It starts at the defensive end. The big guy's picking up on the perimeter, forcing the air and pass. And Fuller with the jam. And that'll make the fans sit out of cell and get them back into the game mentally. Yeah, they may not be able to sit long with this basketball game. Ocus and foul on Pettis outside on the dribble. Good call. He he held the Bulldogs. Take a look at the great play and the anticipation by Fuller. Yeah, he played the passing oh, lane as well. Right. And obviously, the big guy in the open court's going to jam that one down. That's an emotional lift for Fresno State, who've been struggling to begin this second half. Bulldogs have gone into a zone, so they're switching. They came out of the man for man and into the zone. Okuson is the guy to look for if you're Nevada against the zone because he's such a great spot up shooter. He'll try and pop open. He gets it there to Hill Thomas. It's Felix in the air. And how many times have we seen that this season? Well, that's. What Hill Thomas, Thomas could do as well as anybody in the WAC. He shot 20 fouls against Cal State Northridge in a non-conference game. It's that little pump fake. And he actually jumped into Noel Felix, who was trying to get out of there. But that's just smart basketball by Gary Hill Thomas. Well, unless Noel Felix has wings, he's going to come down, and that's going to be a foul. Hill Thomas misses the first free throw. And Felix comes out and plays by Jonathan Woods. Felix on the verge of scoring in double figures against Nevada for the first time in his career at Fresno State. He has eight points. Just a matter of him staying on the floor long enough and he will score against this team. All the big players will because they're susceptible inside. But again, Noel's on the bench with three fouls. Pass. Knocked out of bounds. Nevada couldn't handle it. Hill Thomas and Snyder battled for it. Jackson threw it into traffic. It was a bulldog ball. 23 on the shot clock. Yeah, Fresno State got a break with Damon Jackson with an ill-advised pass. Uh, they're very fortunate that the Wolf Pack muffed this. So it would have been their basketball. There's an errant pass into traffic. You can see the two Pack players collide and the ball careen out of bounds. Demanding the inbound right in front of us. Fumbles it, but it goes to the man. Now 12 on the shot clock. Fuller, ball away. Can't get it to go. Adam for the rebound. Tip. Fuller kept it alive. Jackson pulled it down. Great hustle by Hiram Fuller. Anticipating the miss, getting physical, but yet without fouling. That was a terrific effort by Hiram Fuller. Jackson looking for the ball coming off the screen. Instead, it's Fuller in the double team. Splits the defenders and forces it up and in. That was power basketball. You're right. He split two defenders. He powered up against both of them and drove it right through. Hiram Fuller now with 12 points to lead Fresno State. And a foul the other way against Gary Hill Thomas. Trying to get away from and elude Travis Demanby, who is a tenacious defensive player. The Bulldogs with a chance to tie or take the lead with a three. Get a three. This place will explode. Four. He can make a three-point play. He hits the free throw. 
Good place to start. Hiram Fuller. They cannot stop him. Nevada has no answer for the big man of the Bulldogs, and Ray Lopes knows it. Fourth personal foul on Sean Paul. That could be big. He's quickly hustled to the bench, replaced by Matt Oates. Earlier he got three fouls against Dean Brown, so he may foul out the whole interior of the Wolfpack team. Boy, we've seen Hiram Fuller make the last three baskets for Fresno State. First the steal and the breakaway slam. Then the nice drive when he split the defenders and laid it up. And this time he has a little fall away in traffic, draws the foul, and makes the free throw. Fresno State is back in front. 15-57 to play. The fans are at their feet. Bulldogs have the lead once again. wireless phone today at CNC Wireless, a T-Mobile authorized dealer. Choose from a number of great rate plans like 600 whenever, wherever minutes for just $39.99 per month. Or try our family time plan. My T-Mobile phone from CNC Wireless helps me keep in touch with family and friends nationwide. We have the right phone and the right plan to fit your lifestyle. I'm Chris. Come in and get more today. Remember CNC for all your wireless needs. Call CNC Wireless today. Struck down without warning. Welcome, Flyer, the Voyager. Make it! Left alone to die. He's a neuroleptic shot and stripped of his past. I'm not a Vulcan! Not anymore! Now they must catch two box attacker. We have to find the people who are here. The crew needs his help. I don't remember. Try it. Or this ship doesn't have a friend. Cease fire immediately. On the next Star Trek Voyager. Monday afternoon at 5 on WB59. Dale Earnhardt Jr., defending points champion Tony Stewart, battle last year's race winner Sterling Marlin in the UAW Daimler Chrysler 400, live from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. It's tomorrow morning at 11.30 on KMPH, Fox 26. You know, Ralph, it's always a fun game when teams are making shots, and both teams are shooting the ball expertly tonight. Got a close game and a fun game. The spectators love it. Of course, they wanted to come out to Fresno State with a run like that. The Bulldogs have a great chance, but they still have to clamp down at the defensive end every time. Ocas finds an opening and draws foul. I believe that may be on Hiram Fuller. It is on Fuller. That will be three on Hiram. Todd Okuson has more skills than just shooting the basketball. He put it on the floor, and the Bulldogs rotating over. Very tardy. Uh, that is a sequence that will not make the coaching staff happy because the, the seas parted. They made it easy for Okerson to attack the iron. Tied at 42. Okerson can put Nevada back in front. And it's just about automatic when he gets no, to the Go spot both of them. They both have three fouls, so you have four to give between Phillips and Fuller. Okerson would be the nation's leader in three-point accuracy. He makes 2.3 a game. You have to average 2.5 makes a game to be in the statistics. But he's shooting 50% from three, and that's the best percentage in the country. Nevada with a one-point lead. That is defended by Petty. And be trying to get it inside the Felix does. He'll work on Oaks. Left-hander. No! Felix in double figures for the first time ever against Nevada. He has 10. The, Bull the Bulldogs lead again by a point. Felix operating and playing very confidently at the offensive end. Now Snyder. Body in Woods. And the foul will be on Woods. Boy. That's a tough call there. If you watch that, Jonathan Woods had no place to go, and Snyder just pushed him around. Watch Woods try to hold his position, and Snyder just says, uh -uh, I'm coming in. I agree with you. That's, that's an offensive foul. That's the first obvious bad call of the game. There's been some that could have gone either way. This is a bad call. Jonathan Woods was just shoved out of there. And you can see the expression of Jonathan Woods in disbelief after that call. 
Snyder now with 14 in the game. Think about it all sports. If you're the offensive wide receiver in football, the DB very rarely gets the goal. And really, at the defensive end, you better be stationary in an obvious spot or they're normally going to give it to the offensive guy. And that's what happens there. Snyder misses the second, tied at 44. Ball. They'll reset the shot clock for 35 seconds. Fresno State will have it out of bounds. Well, the Bulldogs would like to get Travis Demanby off the schneid from the perimeter tonight. He could knock one down, really help out things for the guys inside. But we haven't seen much from the perimeter of Fresno State, uh, except from early in the game. Damon Jackson, here to kill Pettis with a tough shot. Short low. Felix tried the one-handed putback for the slam. Hill Thomas goes into the first row of fans. It'll be Fresno State ball. I love the fervor of this game. Wow. I mean, we knew that the Bulldogs would come out thinking championship, playing hard. But Nevada's answering. You could see the effort there what by Gary Felix? Hill Thomas. Well, we're not going to see the Felix play, but Hill Thomas going into the, the good seats over there. Jackson. Brown with the rebound. Okerson hits the deck. Now they're bringing up the floor. Still tied at 44. You're right, though, by Merrill Phillips. It's a great effort. I'd like to have seen him secure the ball a little bit better. Bill Thomas went up for the shot. The foul will be on Jonathan Woods. He now has three. Okerson with a, with a real slick pass. Watch this. Yeah, well, that's what they do. I mean, they can cut you up offensively. Okerson has all skills, ball handling. And they have the ability to get inside because they all handle the ball so well and they're all athletic. This is just a tough team to defend. Hill Thomas struggling from the free throw line tonight. I believe he's now 0-3. Yeah, he is. Uh, the one guy who has struggled with him. Actually 0-5. Yeah, Terrence Green has not shot the ball well for Nevada. He's been the one missing piece in their offense. Missed them both. Pettis gets the rebound. Still tied at full pull. Of course, without Hiram Fuller in there, Felix is still solid, but he's not the dominating presence inside. Trying to get it into Jonathan Woods, but he's being defended very well by Snyder. Six on the shot clock now. So Pettis will fire up the three, and he hits it. Oh, my. He'll be on the all-freshman team in the last, but what I like about him more than anything, he's a winner. And he plays hard, and he brings great energy to the team. Biggest lead of the second half for Fresno State, now up 5-3. And that shot, of course, from the perimeter will open it up for the bigger guys inside. Pass inside, Snyder fumbles it, puts it up and in. Close to a double double, but he had his composure, held that composure. Finally got the basketball, and again inside, he's dangerous. So Mandy picked up quickly defensively, couldn't get the perimeter shot off. I gotta tell you, I think Kirk Snyder's been playing the NBA some, but he's but a sophomore. He is so skilled. Bulldogs wish he was playing in the NBA tonight. Rebound by Green. Strong drive, throws it up, can't get it to go. Woods with the rebound. Bulldogs back the other way. About it is back defensively. Woods left hand. Again, Terry Pettis breaking down the defense and finding the open man. Again, a three-point lead to Fresno State. Less than 12 and a half minutes to play. Well, this is fun. Snyder spins, blocked by Felix. Oh, goaltending, they're going to call Noel Felix. I don't want to look at this one again. That'll be worth another look. Kirk Schneider again with wonderful ball skills. Well, that's a brilliant pivot. That ball looked like it was going up. I'm not sure. sure. Let's take a look at it from the other angle. 
Well, it was uh, close. Uh, that might have been a good call. I'm not uh, going to dispute that. It's close. I'm going to dispute it, but uh, it's close. We're t- we're, what is it? Three? Did they give him the points? They haven't put the points up there. It should be 49-48, and it's turned over by Fresno State. Going back the other way. And I believe that's four on uh, Fuller if it's 24. I haven't seen the indication. It is Hiram Fuller. As soon as he came back into the game, picked it up. Yeah, that's what I thought on the pick inside. So he's going to probably come out of the game. And now there's great pressure on Fresno State. So someone's going to have to step up. Whether it be a Ronaldo Major or a Jonathan Woods or Damon Jackson, someone has to step up in the final 12 minutes of this game. Well, remember, Fresno State came back and took the lead with that puller. And now they're going to have to play a lot of this game without their big man. Snyder in traffic over Woods. Throws hit up and in. Boy, he is sensational. Uh, he's played like the player of the year tonight in the WAC. I mean, he, this is not the same guy that played against Fresno State in Nevada. He's got a purpose, and he's been dominant. Major no good to the tip in by Demandy. That was a poor job by Nevada boxing off Demandy. And then at the other end, Green gets a clear path to the basket, but can't get it to go. He does come out with a rebound. Hectic pace favors Nevada. They love this style. Opuson from outside. He hasn't hit a three yet in the game. Terrific job by Major boxing off Dean Brown. Three by Jackson. Good. In transition, Damon Jackson is so good. He gets the open look, and again, it was Terry Pettis. Pettis found Damon Jackson. Time out on the floor. Fresno State's 11 minutes away from the wide championship. A product of two, son of Barry, daughter of Cola. All together different, but not all together the same. I am blue, a fusion, no confusion. Barry is the star, Cola gets second billing. It's for anyone, but it's not for everyone. It's time for change. Tick, tock, time to change. Tick, tock, drink to that. Yeah, drink to that. Pepsi Blue, a fusion of berries with a splash of Cola. Pepsi Blue, it's a blue thing. You already know the Bulldog Brewing Company is the home of award-winning micro-brewed beer. But did you know the Bulldog Brewing Company also has a great menu? There's fresh seafood, steaks, pastas, salads, sandwiches, and specialty dishes. Bulldog's Pizza is made from fresh ingredients and slowly roasted in their wood-fired oven. The Bulldog Brewing Company is a great place to relax with family or friends, have lunch or dinner, get into the game on TV, or just kick back on the patio. Fresh beer brewed here. The Bulldog Brewing Company. Fresno. Boom, 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 boom. Bang, 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 bang. I love the way you walk. And I love the way you talk. When you walk that walk. And you talk that talk. The drive for the NCAA tournament glows red hot this Wednesday afternoon at 5 when the dogs battle the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Catch it all on K3 WB59. Welcome back to Selton Arena. Randy, you and I were talking before the game. You said uh, they had this poll for the favorite game ever at Selton Arena. And you had yours. And you asked me, what did I say? You said the UNLV game. No, I said, I said, I'm going to wait until this one's over. Oh, okay. You did say that. <laughs> but I think you mentioned something about the UNLV game. That's the one that made it. I like the Memphis game. Yeah, but this one still could get there. I mean, there's a lot at stake here for Fresno State, obviously, in the last regular scheduled game at Selling. But Nevada's not going away, and it's principally a brilliant performance by Kirk Snyder, who has 20 points and who has been unstoppable against single man or double team. Both teams shooting the ball. Unbelievably well for the first 19 minutes. Nevada shooting 56% from the field. Fresno State 55%. And it's a four-point bulldog lead, but Okerson cuts it to one with the three, his first of the night. You have to come out of I mean, you cannot let him set and shoot. You may think he's out too far, but he has unlimited range. And it's unusual when a team on the road shoots this well. That's a credit to Nevada. Most of the time when you have 55 or 60% shooting games, it's at home in your own facility, not on the road. Orlando Todd is back in for Fresno State. Jackson draws the foul on the shot attempt. And he'll go to the line shooting two. 
has this, uh, uh, is my calendar wrong? Has the WAC tournament started? Because these teams are playing at a tournament pitch. Tournament fever. These are hard possessions, hard plays on each end of the court, every play. That's just a nice curl and a nice drive by Damon Jackson. Now, he's not been a good foul shooter, and this is an area he should be much better at because he's such a good shooter. Jackson now with 12 in the basketball game. If he makes this one, the Bulldogs will have a three-point lead. Needs a bounce and gets it. 13 points for Damon Jackson. A 56-53 lead for Fresno State. 10-17 left in the basketball game. And we have a timeout at Selen Arena. Oh, boy, we've got a great finish set up for you. At Woolco, we are really, really into business systems. By offering the world's best products and supporting them with the world's best people, we're creating the office of the future. And you know, it's a pretty amazing place. Wolco, California's number one dealer of Toshiba copiers, fax machines, and digital imaging systems. Visit us at wolco.com for the office nearest you. Eagles Landing. Comfortable setting. Wonderful service. Affordably priced. Eagles Landing Restaurant at Table Mountain. Let your taste buds soar. Just 15 minutes away, north on Friday. Fresno State Basketball is brought to you by Gottschalks. Now that's what I call a sale. By the Bulldog Brewing Company. By Fresno Lexus, who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. And by Carl's Jr. It's only the of the 2003 Hedricks Hallowell Chevrolet Softball Classic beginning Thursday at Bulldog Diamond. Come out all weekend and watch the Bulldogs battle some of the best college softball teams in the nation. Highlighted by the showdown with rival UCLA. That's at 1 p.m. on Sunday. For tickets, call 278 Dogs. I like the fact that Fresno State has four players in double figures. That means uh, they're distributing the basketball while well, a lot of that's been Terry Pettis. Early on, Rolando Chan and Pettis were turning the ball over. Pettis has settled down. He's scoring. He's getting other guys involved. The Fresno State offense has been much better since the first couple minutes of the ball game. The Mattis has hit six of its nine shots here in the second half. Bulldogs 8 of 14. And Fresno State has extended the uh, rebound march a little bit. Bulldogs are outboarding Wolfpack 23 19. Dean Brown with the right hand. A nice move shot by Brown. Woods falls away, can't get the bounce. Major tried to tip it up again, but came over the top. Picks up his second personal. Jonathan Woods goes to the bench along with Rolando Todd, Terry Pettis. And Noel Felix back in for Fresno State. We're already shooting free throws at the other end. 17 fouls on the Bulldogs. So it'll be one and one for Kirk Snyder. 14 fouls on the back. Kirk Snyder is just so good. He's always around the basketball. And, and I think if you're the bat, you got to love the fact that he's only a sophomore. He's, a, he's the kind of cornerstone you can build your team around for years to come. This is the front end. Rebound comes off to Demandy. Wolfpack is missing second half foul shot. That's the reason they're trailing in the ballgame. Just the 11 of 19 from the free throw line tonight. Fresno State gives it right back. Major with the extra step turns it over. Nevada down by one in the ball. Nine and a half minutes to play. 12 turnover on Fresno State. Well, Nevada's only turned it over eight, and the kind of hectic pace it's been, that's a good number for the Wolfpack. So Thomas inside, and Nevada is back in front. Ten in the game for Hill Thomas. Again, able to break down the Fresno State defense with the ability to put the ball on the floor and take it strong to the basket. And Nevada passes it well in the half-court game. 
Reach around foul on Brown. That should be his fourth. Five team fouls down the wolf back. Fresno State ball in the bounce. Good wraparound pass by David Jackson down low to Noel Felix. James played in this case. He didn't think there was a lot of contact. Michael Irvin said, no, you got him. Brown goes to the bench, replaced by Sean Paul, who also has four fouls. Jackson. In and out. Rebound. Switched away by Major. There's no state. A chance to reset. Pettis in traffic. Foul from behind. Out the basket. I love the fact that after he was hit, he held not only his composure, but he bodied up and aimed the basketball. He had the presence of mind to know he already had gotten the foul on his man, and he hangs in the air. This is a spectacular play by Pettis. Foul by Green, his first. Pettis made the free throw. He has 13. Fresno State is back in front by a deuce. Bill Thomas takes it over Noel Felix, who tried for the block. We're tied at 59. How many times can I say it? They take it strong to the basket. You've got to back up defensively, force them to hit over you rather than drive around you. Felix, spin move, but he walked. Oh, my. Ray Lopes just jumps into the air after that. Terrific first by Noel Felix. And had a clear path to the basket, but it's a turnover. Okerson launches it. And for the first time tonight, Okerson starts to do his antics. Yeah, that won't, uh, that won't go over well here. The Bulldogs and the coaching staff were not pleased with the demonstrations he put on up in Nevada after making a couple of those three-pointers. Now the Bulldogs turn it over. Snyder with a basket. Pettis has got burned, though, at the defensive end. Okerson has unlimited range. Green with a miss. The battle for the rebound. Who touched it last? No, they're going to say a foul on demanding. And Ray Lopes wants a timeout. He'd love to be able to talk to some of the officials, I think, if he can get him to come anywhere near his bench. He also wants to get Hiram Fuller back in the game. 7.39 to play. A three-point lead for the Wolfpack. We'll be right back. Something smells good. Lunch is almost ready, Jared. John, what's new today? I'm glad you asked, Mr. Folk. Right now we've got Lloyd's Barbecue Chicken Sandwich. Shredded barbecue chicken smothered in Lloyd's Barbecue Sauce on fresh baked gourmet bread. Only six grams of fat. Jared. 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 Wake up. Same dream? Same dream. Subway is fresh. Sometimes I dream about an ideal home designed to fit my family, my lifestyle, with quality craftsmanship and construction. The McCaffrey Group, a special family of home services from home construction to financing to resale. The McCaffrey Group, because it takes a family to build a home. The McCaffrey Group. For new home information, phone 559-224-1175. Bella Vieira. Custom bluff lots. Some spectacular views. Now selling. Back at Stone Arena, Gary Hill Thomas just made the first of two free throws. Earning the bonus. And Nevada pushes back out to a five-point lead. So Fresno State, a little work to do now. Both pet up by five. It's 64-59. We're going to take a full timeout. Be back to Stone Arena. 7.39 to play. It's getting a little scary. You need maximum protection when it comes to your house, your car, your business, your life. You need max coverage. I'm Manny Whitaker of Cost Less Reliable Insurance. Let max coverage come to your rescue. Max coverage from Cost Less Reliable Insurance, protecting you. 
Do-it-yourself investing is just too risky. You need insight, expertise, and honesty guarding your financial future. Like a knight in shining armor, successful financial is there for you. I'm still on the job. Don't hesitate to give me a call. Sunday at 5, don't forget to watch the Easy View episodes of Smallville and Everwood. Then at 8, a full night charmed event begins as Phoebe is morphed into a mermaid. She likes the idea of being a mermaid and refuses to return to land. It's all in the WB Big Sunday, beginning at 5 on K-Free, WB 59. Unbelievable shooting by Nevada. 60% on the game, 10 of 14 in the second half. Rob, tough to beat a team That's like that. 71.4%. The Bulldogs aren't bad. They're at 53% in the second half. But... Uh, They've gone from owning a four-point lead with 11 minutes left. So now down by five, 739. Three-point shooting is not what's doing it for Nevada. The Wolfpack getting a lot of inside baskets and some great passing. And now Fresno State. With Hiram Fuller back in the game, playing with four fouls. Felix wants the lob pass over Snyder, but Tennis won't give it to him. Major. Pounded in the corner by Hill Thomas, so he goes to the lane, throws it up, comes the basket, he's fouled. And Hill Thomas can't believe it. That was just a player, Ronaldo Major, saying, wait a minute, this is getting physical. I'm going to get more physical. I'm going to take it strong to the basket. This is a wonderful individual effort by Ronaldo Major, putting the ball on the ground, overpowering Hill Thomas, drawing the foul and the basket. And that couldn't have come at a better time for the Bulldogs. Major at the line, tried for a three-point play, which would get the Bulldogs within two. Rattles in and out, rebound, Schneider. Terrence Green has been the one player for Nevada, number four, who has not had a good shooting game. Everyone else has been on fire. Okerson again will launch a bomb. That one's no good. Rebound comes off for Helix. But that's okay if you're the head coach, Trent Johnson. They want him taking that shot, even though it seems like it's way out yonder. He's their Damon Jackson. That's a real dagger if you make it. Jackson will take a three. At this end of time, can't get it to go. Fuller tips it up, keeps it alive. Looking for someone to save it to on the floor. And it comes off to Okerson. Numbers for Nevada. The pass to Snyder. Blocked by Pettis. But they're going to say a foul on Pettis. Oh, my. I think what bothers everyone is the how tardy the call is. There was a lull before the whistle. See if there's a foul. Great effort there by everyone. Looks like Green got away with a push. Let's see if this is a clean block. Now, he got him on the arm, but I, it's a good call. It's just a tardy call. But I do think Terrence Green got away with a push at center court. This guy's been spectacular. Doesn't get the bounce on the first free throw. Pettis, by the way, picks up the foul. It was his second personal. Dean Brown checking back in for Nevada. Now, this is just a tribute to Nevada. They, they've come into the building, and obviously in a hostile situation, and played an outstanding game. 
Snyder has led the charge. Now with 21 as he gets the second free throw, a four-point Nevada lead. Jackson takes the handoff. Again, Cole with the rebound, puts it up. Too strong. Rebound to Brown. Boy, did everything right to finish. Green lost it out of bounds. Carried it over, so it'll be the same result. Turnover gives it back to the Bulldogs. Boy, had he been on, they really would have been in. And now Trent game. Johnson is asking for an explanation. Neither bench happy with the officiating at this point. Well, that was a good call. He carried it over, but. Green has not had a good game, and that's been the one positive that's helped the Bulldogs out. Felix over Brown, too strong. Fuller battling for the rebound, took it away from Oaks, and he looked like he went right over his back to get it. It is getting very physical, and you're right. Again, he's playing with four fouls, and the Bulldogs need him on the floor for the final five and a half. Pettis spins, Chisar gets it to Major, that's a three. And in! Harry Pettis again, breaking down the defense. The composure of the freshman, he found the open man. Major hit the shot. Fresno State is down by one as we approach the five-minute mark. Oaks off the glass. Strong by Matt Oaks. Three-point game at the five-minute mark. Major on the baseline. Contact. Doesn't get it to go, but it comes out to Pettis. Jackson for three. That'll be short. Rebound knocked away out of bounds by Fresno State. Nevada will have it. 4.45 to play. Boy, some anxious moments. Bulldogs have had a couple of good cracks at it. Damon Jackson had some looks to tie this game. Nobody's left selling the arena. I can tell you that. Three-point game. They do. They're crazy. Sean Paul. Number four has the four fouls. And they're going to get him for five. And Hiram Fuller cannot believe it. What do you do, Randy, if you're a defensive player like that and you've established your position and you're getting bumped back into the paint? There's nothing you can do. You, you have to, you really have to back off and let them go if they're going to call it that way. You know, the bottom line is it's the interpretation of the official, and he's interpreting that as a foul. It isn't. The offender, the offensive player is jumping into him, but if they're going to call it that way, you have to basically let him go. You're going to get ticketed for the foul. I mean, is that the rule? Did, did, was no, no, he has the right to that position. But they're not calling that. And that's the second call that's gone against Fresno State of that ilk. Earlier, Jonathan Woods got pushed off the block. And both those calls are not how it's supposed to be called. Hiram Fuller obviously dejected. He'll have to watch the final four and a half minutes from the bench. And uh, maybe that's a little justice. Paul missing the free throw. We're in the double bonus. Ten team fouls on Fresno State. Seven on Nevada. Again, it's not officiating beating Fresno State. It's great shooting and offensive basketball by Nevada. But those little calls in a close game like this are magnified. Paul throws up a couple of bricks, so it doesn't cost Fresno State anything except the great player of Hiram Fuller. That's a big exception. Jackson, three over Snyder, comes up short, knocked out of bounds, last touch by Brown, it'll be Bulldog ball. Terrific work by Jonathan Woods, dogging Brown and forcing that, in essence, turnover back to Fresno State. Pettis has to throw it in deep to Major. Dogs down by three. Felix has to go off his hands, and he loses it. Took his eye off the ball. Paul picked up the loose ball. Under four minutes to play now. Bulldogs in the final four minutes have to play airtight defense and contest all dots. Green bumps hard by Major, still throws it up and in. Seven points for Terrence Green and a five-point lead for Nevada. Credit to Green has had a slow night coming up with a big basket.
Pettis gets it off to Major. He'll drive, right hand, puts it up in the air. Timeout, Fresno State. Three point deficit, 317 to play. 69 66, Nevada with the lead. We'll be back to Selling Arena right after this. Bulldog softball and baseball are set to begin their quest for national titles. Head coach Margie Wright begins her 18th season at the helm of Fresno State softball, while Fresno State's new baseball coach, Mike Batesel, looks to bridge the gap between the program's tradition-rich past and promising future. To purchase season tickets, call 278-DOGS or go online at GoBulldogs.com today. Ask you about the convenient tailgater, food caddy for your chair back seat. Fresno State softball and baseball. The traditions continue. Imagine a business relationship with someone who shares your vision, your drive for success. A business relationship with someone who accepts your challenges and helps take you to new heights. An advocate and source of knowledge. The kind of business relationship you'd have with Comerica Bank. Offering experience and expertise that no other business bank can. With fast, flexible solutions and a staunch belief that you're the priority. Because at Comerica Bank, we listen, we understand, we make it work. In a time without law, justice is coming to Tombstone. I said, throw down, boy. Every town has a tale. This one has a legend. Mal Kilmer, Kirk Russell. Tombstone. Sunday afternoon at 2 on WB59. Fresno State baseball and softball are now in high gear. Season tickets are available now. Call 278-DOGS or go online at GoBulldogs.com to get your baseball and softball season tickets. Well, the Bulldogs need a defensive stop. I hate to harp on that, but they're facing a team that's hit 12 out of 17 against them in the second half, which is 71%, and is shooting 60.5% for the ball game. So if Fresno State's going to win it in the final 317, it definitely starts, and there's those numbers, at the defensive end. They have to deny the inside to the Wolfpack. 12 of 17 from the field in the second half for Nevada. Okerson lobs it inside. Jimmy Despada over his head, out of bounds. And Fresno State will have it. And hey, guess what? We have another timeout. Three minutes and five seconds to play. Timeout on the floor. Take a look at the turnover on the way out. A poor play by Okerson. Okay, this is what I want to debate. Free checking, free convenient ATM locations, free unlimited phone access to my account, and free internet home banking. And I want a bank with a warm, friendly staff. Maybe a bank isn't what you need. What you really need is State Center Credit Union. Everything you're looking for, plus great rates on loans and savings accounts. Invest in yourself. Join State Center Credit Union. Sean Millbrook, one block west of Fresno State. Open Monday through Friday till 6 p.m. Wish me luck. Oh, my God. Calm down. Oh, my God. You're making a spectacle. You're getting back together with Dean. What are you doing here? I thought you were trying to talk to me. I must have imagined it all then. Don't go. Why? I love you, you idiot. Every Sunday on Beginnings, Gilmore Girls Beginnings. Sunday night at 7 on WB59. On the WB Monday night, Lucy Camden is ready to get married. I love you, Kevin. But when Simon discovers a secret relationship... It's none of your business. Let's go. Lucy's future is in doubt. Shippity. Please, don't do this. Seventh Heaven. Monday night at 8 on WB59. Wednesday on Dawson's Creek at a midnight rave. What's going on with us? Full of mystery. There are some things that are all too real. I am ending it now. Come on. Dawson's Creek. Wednesday night at 8 on K3 WB59. Don't miss your second chance to see the most powerful episode of the season. Dr. Brown performs his magic when he performs a very delicate brain surgery. See why Everwood is the best new family drama on television. Everwood, Monday night at 9 on K3 WB 59. More scores from the Quick Science scoreboard. Brought to you by Quick Science. Illinois with a squeaker. Syracuse uh, need a little extra time to win that game. 
not, not in order for this game. No, and I think Pettis has got to try to break this defense down. It's good things that happen to the Bulldogs when he's broken down the defense. Major, in and out. Paul gets the rebound. Boy, that was a layup. Yeah, you got to make those at point blank range. Major did the right thing. He took it right to the basket. Just a three-point game. Time not on the side of Fresno State. Okerson dishes it off. Paul loses it. And they're going to have a foul call on Fresno State. And it's Major who can't believe it this time. We're going to watch it again at the risk of my better judgment. We had a scramble for the ball. Major did grab him from behind. Well, you talked about how physical the game has become. And well, it's not consistent. No. But there was a grab there. There's been physicality both sides. But two calls I don't like are the ones when the inside players of Nevada back down the Fresno State play. Paul has thrown up three straight bricks now. He'll get one more with 2.32 to play. Fresno State trailing by three. It's 69 66. Wolfpack. Paul finally makes one, making it a four-point game. Yeah, and a two-possession game. Uh, you got to look for three-point land with Damon Jackson. I think that's where the Bulldogs are going to look. Jackson going to be hounded by Snyder. Yeah, Snyder picked him up immediately because he sends the same thing. Snyder's the designated defender. He'll stick to Jackson. Pettis, that's a tough shot. Can't get it to go. Rebound. Out of bounds, Fresno State. As Brown goes flying over the TV cameraman, he gets up. Looks like everybody's okay over there. Effort by Fresno State. They've rebounded very well tonight. They've out-rebounded the Wolfpack. And then, and again, they're pounding on the glass, forcing the batter to drop the ball. And Jackson tried to get off that three, and Schneider just got in his face, and he's taunting him now, shaking his head. That'll be a blocking foul on Okerson. Schneider, a little bit of a... Of a taunter out there. We talked about Okerson. Very demonstrative. Good PC first step. It was a good first step, and Okerson was not set. Let me tell you, that was a pretty good collision. I mean, they're not kidding around. I, and I said earlier, this is being played at a tournament pitch. This has uh, really been a hard fought game. Initially, they ruled it was a two point shot. Now they're going to say one and one. And the ball was on the ground, and it is the 18th foul. Major normally reliable at the line. Rebound of the miss taken by Wood, so that's a break for the Bulldogs, trailing by four. Under two minutes, sense of urgency for Fresno State. And it's for three, in and out. Boy, they've had some shots going in and out here in the last couple of minutes. And now you've got to get back and play some defense. Green. That's no good. Jackson with the rebound. And Trent Johnson shakes his head. I don't think he wanted that shot, even though it was wide open. Well, it, would have been, it would have been a dagger. There's the holding foul on Green against Pettis. Fresno State has to hit these foul shots. I mean, they're getting opportunities. They could have seized the lead had they made some opportune shots and made some fouls. And Ray Lopes knows it. They're getting chances. Jackson. Pettis again with strong ball handling skills and is a powerful guy. He could have got away. You know, Terrence Green has a case. I mean, Pettis pushed off. So there's when the Bulldogs got back. Pettis earns the bonus. He has 13. In the last three games, Terry Pettis has averaged 17 games. So he's been on a roll. Makes him both. 14 for Pettis. A two-point game. And the fans now in unison, rise to their feet. Timeout Nevada. Timeout Nevada. That'll get the fans in their seats. Hopefully, they'll know after the timeout to get right back up. Well, this will be the biggest defensive stop if the Bulldogs can get it this year. And, and I just love the way Terry Pettis, the freshman, is trying to carry this team down the stretch to victory. This broadcast is authorized under telecasting rights granted by the Fresno State Athletic Corporation intended solely for non-commercial use. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the descriptions, accounts, pictures, or sounds of the broadcast without express written consent of the Fresno State Athletic Corporation is prohibited. Ray Lopes 
huddled around players with his coaches. Hiram Fuller, you see, is fouled out. If you just joined us, he fouled out. Four and a half minutes to play. Now it's a minute 22. 29 on the shot clock. Nevada will have the ball in a two-point lead. Well, the Mambi's out there as you look at the standings as of now. Now Nevada with a win to jump right back into this. With Demandy out there, you think in terms of a steal. And Demandy's going to be played against Kyle Corver and played him tough. Even though Corver hits three, will be all over Oakerson at the point. And Stu gets back up, coming out of the timeout. Snyder. Inside the pole. He backs in. He's in that three-second area for a while to back it up. Seven on the shot clock. Green, defended by Pettis. Drives over Pettis. Throws it up. Can't get it to go. We got a whistle. Foul on Pettis. Two shots. Well, Terrence Green, experienced four-year player for Nevada, just went on one-on-one. -on -one. And, but it was Snyder that kept it alive. And Kirk Snyder's diligence on the glass made that play happen. Green's going to the free throw line. So noisy in here, you can barely hear the whistle. I believe they called it on the initial attack to the basket. Green misses again. That opens the door for the Bulldogs. Even if he makes this, it'll be a one-possession game, and that's why Jackson's coming back in for Demambi. He has that three-point capability. The best Green can do is give him a three-point advantage. And he does. Green now with eight points. It's a three-point Nevada lead. Under a minute to play. There's still time to go hard to the basket. They don't have to get the three, but if they get the good look, might not be a bad idea with the likes of a Damon Jackson who's hit so many big threes in his career. But I think it starts with Terry Pettis taking it to the basket. 30-second timeout. They will talk it over. 49 seconds left in the game. Fresno State will have 31 on the shot clock coming out of the timeout. Well, Fresno State's won all these close games all season long. I know they lost by 167-66 at uh, great. And we're going to have another tough game coming up on WB59 on Wednesday at Tulsa. But this is the close game they really want to get the WAC championship. They've been so good in the close games. We'll see if they're good in the final 50 seconds of this. And that's going to be a tough assignment because the Golden Hurricane is the favorite coming into the season and finally put the pieces back together. Tulsa had won four in a row going into tonight's game against San Jose State. You expect the Golden Hurricane to probably take that one as well. Fresno State, you want to know how they've been doing on three-point shots. Three of 14. Jackson has two of them. Pettis has the other. As uh, you look at the season stat, they shoot 36%, so they had a below average shooting game from three point. The Bulldogs have one timeout remaining if they need it. With a win, Fresno State can make that game at Tulsa virtually meaningless. Certainly meaningless as far as the championship goes. Jackson for three. Oh, oh, oh. With 36 on the shot. Let's see, there's 36 on the game clock. That was brilliant. It gets two things. They get the three, and they're also going to get the ball back. Or no, they won't. Well, they get it back with 1.9. 1.9. How quickly they diagrammed it. And again, on the curl. He's very good. So it comes down to one possession. And Fresno State and Damon Jackson, who's been amazing, whether it be against St. Mary's, Centenary, or Hawaii, it really doesn't matter. He has not had a good shooting game since early, but it doesn't matter. Come clutch time, Damon Jackson's going to take the shot. He didn't hit one against Creighton, but he said, hey, I want another opportunity. He got the opportunity, and there's nothing but net for Damon Jackson on senior night. The senior drilling the biggest three of the year, but they still need one more important defensive stop. Jonathan Woods got just enough of Kurt Snyder on the screen to give Jackson the opening to fire off the three-pointer and hit it. You've got to love the entertainment value of this Fresno State team gives you. They are a heart attack waiting to happen. Close games. The cardiac kids are at it again. Here we go. Nevada the ball is focusing. Picked up by Demandy at the timeline. Of course, you don't want to foul. They're in the double bonus. 
the way some of these guys have been shooting free throws, who knows? You've got to expect it's going to be a guy like Snyder taking control. He goes to work. He spins. Puts it up and in. One possession. Remember, a three to the game. Pettis. He'll drive the tie. And done it. 6.8 seconds, 73 all. Remember, Okerson has unlimited range, number three. You have to get and cover Okerson. Now, Nevada's called timeout. Again, the freshman Pettis is unbelievable. I mean, the kid has ice water in his veins. Terry Pettis just not nervous at all about taking that big shot. Ties the game at 73. i got to give you credit. You said before this, but this would be the greatest one of all time at selling. And the way it's going, it has a chance to be. Well, when you talk about the meaning of the game as well, you know, the, the UNLV win, that was certainly big in the scheme of that big rivalry. And the, the Memphis game that I liked so much uh, sent the Bulldogs to Hawaii and then ultimately to New York. But this one for the WAC regular season championship. Well, the brilliant freshman Pettis is going to shoulder the burden and just take it hard to the iron and beat a bigger man, Kirk Snyder. I mean, that was not an easy shot. Snyder's 6'6 six, six and 220. And Pettis said, hey, I don't care. I'm going up body to body, and I'm going to tie this game. And I've been talking about it for the last 10 minutes. The Bulldogs need defensive stops. It comes down to six seconds, and they're going to need the biggest defensive stop of the year. You know where the ball's probably going. You're thinking it's Kirk Snyder, because they have not had an answer to him. But keep in mind, Gary Hill Thomas is six of seven from the floor, and there's Todd Okerson, who 50% of the time he lets it fly from anywhere on the floor. It's going in. Well, and, and we'll, we'll have to watch and see also what Fresno State does here defensively. How much pressure will they put in the backcourt? And it's probably going to be one of the guards. And those guards, whether it be Petty or Okerson, shoot the ball well. I wouldn't be surprised if Petty comes back in. Jerry Petty, the inspirational leader, is extremely quick and a penetrator. They can get the ball up the floor and maybe dish it to either Snyder or uh, obviously Okerson. But I want to see if he comes back on the floor because Petty gives him great quicks. 6.8. Seconds to go. We're going to stay with Terrence Green, who's another long-range shooter. So not quite as quick a team by Trent Johnson, but a very good shooting team he's got on the floor. And you're right, they have to come the distance. But there's still plenty, they have plenty of time to get it there. They don't even have to rush. Nearly seven seconds. And Snyder got right around Major. Good put it up. No good. Out of bounds. Time expires. Overtime. Too much by one guy. He should have given the ball up. Fresno State got a great break, but they played good defense. Well, and Ray Lopes wasn't happy when Snyder got around Major back here either. Well, Major was concerned out. about the foul, but but Snyder should have given up the ball. He had three or four of them come out, you know, at some point. And, and Snyder's had a phenomenal game. He should have given the ball up. There you see the situation. Timeout as they talk it over to get ready for overtime. We'll be back to Selvagreen after this. WBS Big Sunday, a two-hour charm event. The seduction of the sea draws her near. There's nothing like being a mermaid. It's pure freedom. A choice between being a charmed one. She wants to be a mermaid because you broke her heart. Or life without feeling. It's everything my way said it was. Baby, take my hand. I'm not going back. Charmed, a two-hour event. Sunday night at 8 on K3 WB59. Wednesday on Dawson's Creek, at a midnight rave full of mystery, there are some things that are all too real. I am ending it now. Dawson's Creek, then Faith's Return, for the first of ten all-new episodes. Get it on. Eliza Tushku was back. That's going to sting in the morning. <laughs> An all-new angel after Dawson's Creek. Wednesday night at 8 on K3 WB59. 
Hey, you thought you were going to get to sleep early on this Saturday night, huh? Uh, we have overtime for you at Selma Marina, 73-73, Fresno State. Trying to get a win that will clinch the wide championship. You know, the sports information director here at Fresno State, Jake Bergonier, coined an expression, free basketball for everyone when it goes into overtime. Well, this is free basketball, and it's a wonderful time. It's, it's, uh, we're in between periods in a way here. We're going to an extra session. And the fans are just sitting back, relaxing, after exhausting themselves down the stretch, hoping against hope that Fresno State can either win it or certainly at least get a tie and send it into overtime. And you've got to give great credit to Terry Pettis. The freshman point guard was absolutely brilliant down the stretch. Big three-pointer hit by Damon Jackson. Ira Fuller is fouled out, so Noel Felix. And Kurt Snyder. We'll tip it off. Felix is probably so amped up right now, he's in danger of banging his head on the scoreboard. Gets the tap out of bounds. And they're going to re retip. Probably a good idea, and that was a horrid toss. It was uh, not in the middle. It was uh, tilted in one direction. They had a little slice on that. Yeah. Yeah. A little fade. Here we go again. Jerry White tosses it. Bulldogs get it. Seems like the Bulldogs have not been in the lead for a very long time. Remember, Fresno State went double overtime to get a win at San Jose State. They'll make five overtimes tonight to get a win. Felix, right up to the aggressive go down low. You know, you talked about him not scoring against the bat. It's just a matter of him staying on the floor. He stayed on the floor tonight, and again, it was Pettis with the entry pass. Bill Thomas loses it, and he goes to Fresno State. He thought, the that, he thought there was going to be a foul. He thought he was fouled and lost the hand. And technical foul on the head coach, Chuck Thomas. And he better relax or he's going to get thrown out. He's irate at Jerry White. He thought what his player thought. He thought there was a foul when he was going to the basket. Having to be pulled away by one of his assistants. And I'll tell you what, the fans got that technical foul because the fans on the other side of the arena started yelling, T, 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 and then the official made the call. It's interesting. Craig got the call earlier, but he didn't get that call. Oh, the is going to be way short on the technical. <laughs> kind of surprised Terry's taking it. I know he's had a great game, but Ronaldo Major's the better foul shooter. First one must have felt like a medicine ball. Pettison makes it a three-point lead. Bulldogs also have the basketball, and Johnson still getting his two cents worth. Good job by the rest of his coaching staff to restrain him, or he might have picked up another technical, which really would have been damaging. Damon Jackson the inbound in front of us. Coach Lopes asking for a reset of the shot clock. You won't get it. 28. Still have plenty of time. They can set their off. Major was open. Wouldn't take the shot. Now he goes. Can't get it. Rebound comes off to Snyder. Boy, that would have been a big basket for Fresno State with him a five-point lead. Can't fault the shot selection, though. He took it right down Major. So had a great look. Again, getting noisy. Nowhere near 100 on that meter, though, up in the corner. It's been up over 80 tonight. Brown backing in. Slotted out by Felix to the mid-court line with six on the shot clock. Thomas drives. Another block by Felix. Holy cow! Three on one. Jackson. Slam down! Johnson needs a timeout. The defense has come alive in the overtime. What a sequence for the Bulldogs! What a sequence for Noel Felix! That was spectacular! Listen to these fans! Let's look at that again! This went from improbable to nearly impossible. Brilliant block there. Bill Thomas takes it right back at Fresno State's defense, and there he comes again. And that triggers the fast break. And the explosion at the other end is in a form of a Damon Jackson jam. And it's all started by great defense by Noel Phillips. Boy, the thing I love about it is on the second block, he's over on the other side of the key, kind of laying in the weeds over there. 
and watch it. Watch the anticipation. He sneaks over when Hill Thomas makes his drive, and that's it, baby. Well, you got to play on your man, which is Sean Paul. And you're right, he came over to help out. And I love that pass again by Pettis. I mean, Pettis has distributed the ball just magnificently since early on. He had early turnover problems. He had three early turnovers. But since that point, no more. He has only the three turnovers and eight assists. He has been absolutely a consummate point guard for Fresno State. And look at Trent. He's going, I hope I don't let this one get away. And he feels like it might be starting to slip away. But Fresno State can't celebrate too early. There's still plenty of time. 3.24 left. And we all know Nevada has a lot of weapons. Fans down. Bring up the Fresno State here. 3.24 to play. And you're right, Randy. That's an eternity. You're playing against the top offense in the left. It's got to be tough for Hiram Fuller, who's reduced to a cheerleader sitting on that sideline. He played so hard tonight. Trying to, you know, push his teammates to go the distance and win this thing in overtime. Well, it is senior night. We've seen sensational play from seniors David Jackson and the uh, Felix. But you're right, the freshman has been steady throughout. Terry Pettis. Now Green gets it inside to Snyder. Around Woods. Blocked by Major. Out of bounds. It'll stay with Nevada. Bulldogs are contesting Snyder's shot. They're not going to let him get anything easy in this overtime. He or Brown. Those inside players at Nevada. 19 on the shot clock. Inbounded by Green. Sean Paul backing in. Back out to Green. Three-pointer by Green. Rattles in. Uh, he's had a poor game. But Terrence Green is one of those veterans who will keep firing away. It's back to a two-point game. Pettis. Pulls up, short. Rebound taken by Snyder. Now Nevada, little chance to tie again after turning by five. Brown. Up to Green, he says, okay, let's hold it up. Slow it, fellas. We got the veteran out there after Nevada. He just hit the three. He said, let's get into our offense. Still plenty of time. And keep in mind, Oakus is dangerous. Green inside. Too strong. Rebound, though, Brown. He puts it up. That's no good. Rebound, Jonathan Woods. Bulldogs 20 to play. Really dodged the ball because Nevada had two excellent looks inside. Normally they put that down. Everybody's standing at San Marino. A lot of people Pettis. holding their breath. 13 on the shot clock. Pettis going to work. Working around a screen. Spins. He'll fire. That's it now. Rebound comes off to Brown. Pettis thought he was fouled. Looks like he got hit on the arm. 146 to play. Two point game. Green got away with a little push with the right hand on Felix. In traffic. Nice drive by Terrence Green. We're tied at 78. When his team was down by five, Green put it in the high gear, hitting a triple, and then a brilliant drive. And you're right, he's getting aggressive offensively, and he was fortunate he wasn't called. Jackson defended immediately by Snyder. Time out, Fresno State. Well, it's time for the Bulldogs and Ray Lopes' crew. There's Bob Burton's assistant has been so good for them all year long. Chance. 32nd time out. I, I, I give Nevada great credit. I mean, in the throes of all of this, after the Noel Felix blocks and the brilliant two blocks and then the jam and down by five, they went to a veteran player who has not had a good game all evening. Terrence Green answered with a three and then a great drive. And that's been Nevada all night. They just have him. They've just been outstanding at the offensive end. I didn't really mean it when I said they play five overtimes to get a win tonight. Well, I, don't have any, I, don't have any, I don't have any late engagements. So I'm willing to stay here as long as you want. This is this has been fun. I mean, it's it, it's hard to, to stomach. I'm sure if you're a Bulldog fan, but it has been a lot of fun to watch a tremendous spectator game. They voted too soon. I'm telling you. That's yeah. uh, a recount. There's no state. Owning the rebounding margin, the Bulldogs 16 and 1 this year when they out rebound their opponents. Nevada, by the way, is 4 and 8 with giving up 70 points or more. Now it's Jackson. And it's high game. A minute 13 to play in overtime. 15 on the shot clock. Now 10 on the shot clock. Fresno State has to get something going. 
Jackson with five on the shot clock. Woods may have to launch it. Two on the shot clock. Pettis. Boy, you come out of a timeout. And that's the shot you get. That's disappointing. Yeah, it is disappointing, but it's Nevada. And, and again, when the Bulldogs got that five-point lead, I was concerned that they could celebrate too early. Nevada would come back and play hard. And I'm not saying that the Bulldogs have celebrated too early, but Nevada has come back and made each possession really count. Here comes Okuson, who's such a dangerous perimeter player and a good ball handler as well. Boy, that J.C. Cranston, I love Okuson. He's a solid guy. Green with five straight points. He's the guy who scored the points that wiped out the deficit. He'll fire for three, and he's got eight in a row. Oh, my, an 8-0 run all by Terrence Green. Now the Bulldogs trail by three. What a turnaround. Pettis is tripped by Okerson. That'll be three throws for the freshman. Number three, he'll go to the line to shoot two. And now Fresno State, after making, if you make these free throws, you're in a foul situation, aren't you? Well, you go for the steal first, but uh, you know, that was just an accidental trip on Okus, and it sends Pettis to the line. But first things first, the freshman needs to knock these down and get the Bulldogs in your position. Still plenty of time. Makes the first. He has 18 now. His career high was against Boise State here. He played all 40 minutes in the round, and Todd was going to have 20 that night. The man he's in for his defense. He's... Uh, Remember, we all remember the game against Oklahoma State here last year when he had uh, an unbelievable 11 steal. But the man he's on the floor trying to get a second for job at this stage. Nevada's going to take a timeout to try and ice the free throw shooter between the shots. It's a two point game. They also want to set up their offense, their inbounds play. They're going to say, hey, you'll probably make it. They're figuring Terry's going to make it and make it a one point game. And they want to, you know, just diagram where they're going with that inbounds pass. Really, it's a great credit to Terrence Green. He had a horrible game shooting. He was the only one. They get into overtime. This team's buried quickly by a five, and he comes out and says, despite that poor performance, he shakes it off, and it's a couple threes and a brilliant drive. He has eight in a row, and he's got his team in a position to win the game and still have a chance to get the crown in the whack. They're not out of it if they get this game here in Fresno. Fresno State's had an excellent record in the close games this season. Something like that, and two games decided by four points or less. And the theme through much of the season has been, you know, what are you going to do next? How are you going to win this one? And again, we're faced with another situation like that tonight. Pettis needs to make the free throw to make it a one-point game. And then you have to play some defense. And who knows what will happen in the final seconds of overtime. It was unclear how many foul shots he had left. It's obviously one. Strategy worked as he missed it, and then they foul Brown immediately. So it's a two point game and two free throws coming to Dean Brown, who's a 63% shooter from the line this season. Well, Damon Jackson will come right back in for his three point shooter. Remember, it was Jackson who hit the key three in regulation. To get him back even before Pettis hit the driving lap to tie it before the 40 minutes had expired. But you're right. If he hits them both, it's a two possession game. Bulldogs need him to miss at least one. Not going to make that. Normally, that makes the second one a lot tougher to, to take, but it's a little bit easier in that his team has the lead. Nevada won't even put anybody in the key for the rebound. And if he makes this one, I mean, what are the chances that Nevada would foul Fresno State and the Bulldogs to the line to shoot two? I love that strategy, but not a lot of teams employ it. Some coaches do, but not many. Brown misses them both. So now, Fresno State can tie with a two, win with a three. Or take the lead with a three, I should say. Shot clock is off. Pettis. In traffic, has it blocked and he's fouled by Green. Oh, you talk about some pressure pack free throws. Terry Pettis is facing two of the biggest right now. Terrence Green thought he had a clean block, too. I mean, Terrence thought he had a block. Coach thought he walked. I don't think he walked, but it was a contested play. There, there's no walk here. The ball's on the floor. Oh, I don't know. They did take that extra spin in there. Pettis just made one of two. 
Nothing but net on that one. Pettis now with 19. One more will match his career high. It'll also tie the game with 12.1 seconds left in overtime. Misses. You don't want to foul that guy. And they do foul Kirk Snyder. They had no choice. They had to foul him. Uh, Snyder is only a 64% foul shooter. So percentage-wise, he's not great. He's going to get two. And then the Bulldogs will try to hit a three if he makes them both. Try to tie the game again. Terry Pett is bitterly upset with himself for missing that second foul. Fourth foul on the freshman. Snyder with a chance to make it a three-point game. Five seconds left in overtime. The first one is good. 82-80. 24 points now for Kirk Snyder. That matches his career high. The battle will get everyone back defensively. And I agree with you, Ralph. It wouldn't be a bad idea to foul Fresno State if he makes this one once again into the front court. Snyder makes them both. It's a three-point game. The Bulldogs need a three tie in OT. Jackson will take it. And that's it. We're going to double overtime. Why let him do it? Uh, they should have fouled early. They didn't. They should have fouled Pettis. And they let Damon Jackson raise up. Unbelievable game. The Absolutely first, incredible. The first man over there to congratulate Damon Jackson was Terry Pettis because Pettis missed a couple of free throws. And Jackson bailed him out with a three to tie. 83-83. This is just miraculous stuff and a great scream by Noel Felix. Don't forget what Noel Felix did there. Giving Damon Jackson freedom. Green too late. The clock now expired. He didn't look up and look at that clock. But this is a great block right there by Felix. Fending off Gary Hill Thomas and Damon Jackson buried it. That one came with 2.1 seconds left in overtime. I know oh, it's cliche. Man. But it really doesn't get much better than this, does it, Ralph? I mean, this this has been. You know, I don't want it to end. It's one of the. I feel bad in a way for Hiram Fuller who has to sit on the bench and watch this and agonize with everyone else in the building. And there's always the party atmosphere in between overtimes because everyone's relieved that their team didn't win or lose. I got to send a message to the guys back at the television station. Tell us you got to get another tape in that machine. The first one ran out. Well, it could be a battle of attrition. Let's, let's take a look at the foul situation. Because that's, you know, we know that Terry Pettis has four. And uh, Ralph, I know you got a closer angle to just tell the fans who's got the four. Bill Thomas has four. John Paul has four. Dean Brown has four. No one, well, let me see. Ronaldo Major with four and Jonathan Woods with four. And also Pettis, right? Pettis, well, high score she shows three, but I think he did pick up his four. Yeah, it, did, it said earlier on the scoreboard four, but the official sheet, we have a sign of three. three. Yeah. Look at this man, Damon Jackson. He's matched his 21 from the first meeting, but two improbable three-point jumpers at regulation and in overtime has the Bulldogs with more life. We go another five. Second game in a row that you've done that's got into double overtime. That one is knocked out of bounds by Snyder, and they're going to reach up it again. Jerry White's having a tough time tossing the ball up accurately. Noel Felix put in a little overtime tonight. Yeah, time. Noel Felix should control. He's got that great hops. And neither one of them get it that time. They're going to have to do it a third time. They need a taller guy. I mean, maybe one of the other officials should come over there and help them out. This is too short to get the ball up with those guys. That one goes to Sean Paul. 
I do not like the jump ball. After watching it tonight, it's just it's not an accurate throw by the official. I really, and, and, and each possession in a game like this is so vital. We're into the second overtime. You better off flipping a coin. Jackson falls down, and Green fires over the three. That's 11 points in the overtimes for Terrence Green. Major foul on the drive. Will they count the basket? Yes. Well, the Bulldogs are a well-conditioned team. That's one. Four on three. Three. And, and I like the fact they always play hard. And this is going to become a battle of attrition and stamina. And Major, with a lot of tired athletes around them, just drove it hard to the iron. That's a terrific play and a wise decision by Ronaldo Major. A chance to tie it at 86. And Ducks. How many times have I said they need a defensive stop? They got something late in regulation, but they really need one in this second overtime. Focus and defended by Tennis. Gives it to Green. He's got the hot hand. Fires away. Rebound comes off the woods. Well, the Bulldogs have done a good job of rebounding. Right? There just hadn't been a lot of misses. Nevada hadn't missed that often. Now Pettis. It's just off to Jackson for three. That looks good. It is. Damon Jackson in on three. We have a Royal shootout. A whole Western shootout with Damon Jackson and Terrence Green in the overtime. And it is fun to watch. 24 points for Jackson. Three-point lead for Fresno State in the second overtime. Snyder. Reach in foul is going to be on Noel Felix. Count the basket. Did they give it to Woods? I thought he put up 12. Again, Snyder's ability taking it strong to the basket. Again, there's a lot of tired players, and I think it's a wise decision to go strong to the basket for these players because there's a lot of players standing around defensively. They are tired, and they've expended an amount, an unbelievable amount of energy. Woods fouls out, and the man becomes in. Yeah, the foul was on Jonathan Woods, so he goes to the bench, done for the night. Gary Hill Thomas checking in for Nevada. He's left for Ray Lopes. We might see Eric Contenti before this one's over. The one non-scholarship guy available if you lose enough players. Now Snyder to tie at 89. We're in the second overtime. That's going to be long. In and out. The rebound comes off to the Mandy. You want to take care of the ball, and I believe you got to go strong to the basket each and every time with the drive. Now, if Damon Jackson has an available shot, that's another thing because he's his last number of perimeter jumpers. Pettis drives, puts up the right hand. Fresno State leads by three. Career high for Terry Pettis, and he did exactly what I said. Look at that effort. Tremendous effort by Noel Felix. I mean, at both ends of the floor, both teams given everything they've got. Look at Noel Felix flash out and nearly get the theft. Just tremendous effort. Back to live action under three minutes left in the set overtime. Three point lead for Fresno State. Focusing. Careful for a five second shot. He throws it in the backcourt and turns it over. That'll be Fresno State ball. Great defense by the Bulldogs. They're playing without Woods, without Fuller, but the character. It's been a basketball team with great character all season long. Fuller fouled out with four and a half minutes left in regulation. That seems like yesterday. Bulldogs trying to gut it out. Those turnovers are ancient history. They played much better in the overtime protecting the ball. Felix tipped up again, taken, and a foul. David Jackson was the one who had it. Sean Paul threw him down. And it's 42, Sean Paul. That'll be Paul's fifth foul, and he can go to the bench. He's the first Wolfpack to foul out of the ball game, and he just knocked down two Bulldogs. 
cleared everyone out of there. So now Damon Jackson shooting two with Fresno State leading by three in the second overtime. 2.28 to play in the second OT. Dean Brown replaces Sean Paul. Brown comes in with four fouls as well. Sean Paul plays hard. Played hard tonight. Gave it everything he had. Jackson flips it up and in with a right hand. Now he has 25 on the night. Can't believe the three-point shots he's made of this game. Yeah, who do you pick for a player of the game tonight? Team. <laughs> if they win. Nice little flip of the wrist up and in, and it's a five-point lead. The Bulldogs still led by five in the first overtime as well. Darren Green for the go-to guy. Green drives, puts it up, great defense by Major. Rebound put up, and it's blocked. Fresno State has the ball. The possession arrow points in the direction of the Bulldogs. Terrence Demandman, not the most gifted athlete, but maybe the smartest. Did a lot of smart things, poking his hands in there, causing a lot of trouble there for Terrence Green. 22 coming over to help out. Everyone contesting the shots. Ronaldo Major, good job. And there's the jump ball because of the work of Demandman from behind. Felix dribbles it off his foot. Fresno State had a chance to extend the five-point lead. Now Nevada with a chance to get back in it. And Green nearly lost it, but he's out on a reach-in by Pettis. That'll be, we believe, now it's four. Four fouls on Pettis. I wasn't sure. I gave up. I put up a five, and I said, maybe not. I wasn't sure, but it is four. Well, Terrence Green has been so good. And he was the Wolfpack's leading scorer the last three years in a preseason all whack guy. So it's not a surprise that he's getting it done. I'll have to alert our crew that uh, as Green makes the first free throw, they are expecting quite a rush of the court if Fresno State manages to hang on and win this game. And that's a big if right now. But fans have already started to make their ways down from the upper levels. And they're ringing the courts to get some front seal string that's going to try to keep them away if it comes to that. Green, though, makes both free throws, and it's just a three-point game. Bulldogs got to go back inside. They'll start high and go down low. Major gets it off to the man. Now it's Pettis. Looking inside the Felix. He's being defended by Brown. Brown with the four fouls. Now Felix sets the screen. Jackson. He'll drive. Short on the two-pointer. Rebound by Felix. Demandy for a huge three. Oh, yes! It's senior night for Travis Demandy and the crew. The biggest hit of his career. And the biggest lead here in the second half for first Coast State. Snyder nearly loses it at the other end. Bulldogs are up by six. And a whistle stops play. We're going to have a foul against Fresno State. Travis. Noel Felix. Travis Demandy with the biggest shot of his career. He was open and he buried it. What a ball game. What 96 90. And we're getting in the, in the high rent district with these numbers. Again, the effort there by Felix pitching it back out to the shooter, Demandy, and the crowd just loved it. So did Travis Demandy. Biggest basket of his career. Snyder with the free throw. How good is Kirk Snyder? He's got 28 points. He is a man. He's having a career night. Makes them both. But now time is the ally of the Bulldogs. Approaching one minute. Four-point Fresno State lead. One minute. Got to work it down. Use that shot clock. Don't force anything. Got away with the bump to Dean Brown. Ball goes inside. Screened off. It's Felix with the bump. Oh, yes. They are hurting him, making him pay inside. Noel Felix, and he stayed on the floor tonight. Okerson has it blocked, but there was a foul before the block. Felix got up there and rejected another one. Yeah, he is alive and playing with great enthusiasm. And his, his anticipation. That's the bad news. It's Pettis' fifth foul. And that's going to put pressure on Rolando Todd, but he's a good foul shooter coming in at the point guard. And Bulldogs are going to have to hit their fouls. But Noel Felix is cleaning up everywhere against the drivers of Nevada who are taking it strong to the basket. Just another game for these Bulldogs, huh? Terry Pettis will lead with 21 points, 
10 assists. That's a career high at 21, and it won't be his career high when he leaves here. Career high points and assists. Yeah, when he leaves here, what a player. What a find out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. But Rolando Todd will have to shoulder a lot of the burden, but he is a good foul shooter, and i got to think Nevada might be using some of those fouls. Timeout called by Fresno State. Okison will shoot the free throws. A six-point Bulldog lead with 45.8 seconds left in the second overtime. I'm telling you, Eric Contenti might just get in the game. I mean, they're down. They've lost three to fouls. If anyone else fouls out, Eric Contenti is going to be on the floor. Now, he's a great shooter, and I'm thinking in terms of fouls. What Nevada wants to do is put pressure on the Bulldogs, try to steal the ball. They're figuring that Okison's going to make both these throws and make it a four-point play game. And, and if they don't get the steal, then they're going to make the foul. So the positive with Rolando Tide coming in, he's a better foul shooter at the point who handles the ball than Terry Pettis. All right, if this one ever finishes, we'll be in Tulsa next Wednesday. 5 p.m. start. Bulldogs against the Golden Hurricane on K3, WB59. Dogs are on the frog. And right now, they're on the trail of the WAC championship. Now 45.8 seconds away with a six-point lead. But free throws coming to Okison, who is just about money in the bank from the line. Yeah, he shoots over 80% on the year, and he's just a terrific shooter. And that's why they wanted the ball in his hands taken into the basket. They wanted at least a foul, knowing if he gets to the line, it stops the clock. And he does score just about every time from the free throw line. There's Curry Pettis, who had that great game, a double-double. Now he can't do anything more. He's, he's done everything he could possibly do in tonight's game, distributing the ball and giving the Bulldogs a chance to win. And him and Damon Jackson is there, and Noel Felix in the last you know, part of the regulation and into the overtime have been absolutely amazing. Fresno State is trying to play its final game at Selland Arena, but the arena won't let the Bulldogs leave. You know, this reminds me of the game a long time ago I did with uh, the Bulldogs here. Will Hooker against Gonzaga had a shot to send it into overtime, and then Will Hooker jumped on in overtime to win the game. It was in the early 90s. It was, a, at that time, really not a major game. It didn't have the impact this one does, but this one has a lot of the same similarities, but a lot more riding on this game. And I think everyone is certainly happy that K3 added this game to the schedule. This was not on the original telecast schedule, but it turned out to be such a huge game. And it got added to the schedule, and now fans are seeing a classic. Okerson now to the line, shooting two. Okerson with 13. And it's a four-point Fresno State lead. Immediately fouled in the backcourt is Rolando Todd by Opus. And again, that gets to my point. Rolando Todd at the point, normally a very reliable foul shooter. Early in the season, he was the Bulldogs' best foul shooter. Ronaldo Major has since taken that away from him. It's good to have him on the floor because he does normally shoot very well at the line. He's also the coldest guy on the floor, though. He's been on the bench a long time tonight. He's going to come out and shoot to everything for both sides. Is two free throws from now on. Well, there's a lot of warmth and a lot of love in the building for Orlando, I'm sure. And it's a lot easier normally to shoot when you have the lead. But the Bulldogs do have a four-point advantage. Clutch number one as Ray Lopes pumps his fist. First point of the game for Todd. But again, it's been that kind of year where things seem to fall into place, and a lot of it's made by great play. Outstanding coach, but Todd is a good foul shooter, and in this particular spot, maybe a better guy to have on the floor than Pettis because of that. Makes some both. And Fresno State hits the sexy mark, 194. Snyder forces it in. Just get it to go. Felix with the rebound. Snyder is hurt down at the other end of the floor. No, it's Brown who's hurt, and the foul again. In the back court. There's an old adage of the NBA. The first one to 100 wins. If you get to 100, normally you're going to win. The dogs just hit the century mark. They are in great shape to win this game. And now they can start thinking about a whack title, especially if Todd gets either one of these two. And you don't like to see anybody hurt, especially with the whack tournament right around the corner. Nobody going out to help Dean Brown as he finally gets to his feet. And comes down to the other end of the floor, probably. And I'm going to 
I got to say it. I got to credit Nevada. I, I did not expect them to come here and exert this kind of effort and play a championship caliber game. I think Fresno State offensively has played as well as we've seen them all year. And Nevada matched the basket for basket in a very hostile environment. Long now time. Take a well, remember, this Nevada team had the Bulldogs their most lopsided defeat of the season. It was a 13-point defeat in Reno. What, four weeks ago today, February 1st. You know what? The Bulldogs have given up more points tonight than at any time this year. And Ray was bitterly upset with the 92, but of course, there's been all the extra sessions. Todd misses the first. Second one's critical because you want to make it a three possession game. Six points, obviously, two threes to tie. Well, Coach Lowe couldn't mind giving up 120 tonight as long as his guys scored 121. Todd does make it a seven point game now. Snyder will fire for three. Rebound comes off the top, and he'll go back to the free throw line. 26.6 seconds to play. And the fans are starting to realize that this one might be in hand. Most relieved guys, Hiram Fuller. I mean, because the hardest thing to do is be a star of a team or one of the stars, one of the key components, sitting on the bench and watch all the dramatics and not be able to do anything about it. He's going to get out of here with a ring just like the rest of the dogs in the last. Boy, you look back on a game like this, great play with Felix and two block shots and Snow and a big three-pointer hit by Demandy. All the plays by Pettis. Pettis has done so much. Damon Jackson with the big threes. His threes. Everyone has come through. His threes. And it's, it's taken a great effort to beat a Nevada team that shot the lights out tonight. Absolutely shot the lights out. One hundred three ninety four Green for three. And that's good. Todd will be fouled again. 103-97 basketball game as Orlando Todd goes back to the free throw line shooting two with 19 or 16 seconds to play. Now what Trent Johnson's team wants to do is try to elongate the game. 19.3 seconds officially back on the clock. Now they want to try to stop it, hit those quick threes. But again, Orlando Todd at the free throw line is very good. And when you have the lead, not easy. The Bulldogs have just taken their biggest hit of the game up by nine. Todd now just dropping in one after another. He has six points in the game. Nothing Fred Johnson's team can do, really. I think uh, he's got to be played. I mean, he might be a little upset with the way that Lou is in double overtime. But the effort exerted by the Wolfpack has been great. Todd's made seven out of eight free throws. Green with a long three. Opuson with a put back two, and that's good. With 13 seconds left. And foul this time. It's going to be Damon Jackson. That'll be it for Terrence Green, I believe. He will pick up his fifth person. And he'll leave after a terrific overtime, especially. He got off to a slow start tonight. Once he got into OT, he really lit it up. Yeah, and he'll have his senior night when he goes back to Nevada to face Rice and Tulsa in the final two games and the Wolfpack go back home. But Terrence Green in the overtimes was splendid. And despite having a, a, a subpar game, Tom Bernstein did a terrific job. Jackson shooting two. Look at Ray Lopes. I don't know if he is thinking about what he's accomplished right now, but this team's won the last championship, and they were predicted fifth. So this is a, an unbelievable accomplishment for this basketball team. Snyder for three. Rebound. Saved by Oaks. Back to Snyder. Another three. That's short. Rebound. Felix ahead to the Mandy. The horn down. The basketball gets thrown into the air. And in double overtime. State is the Western Athletic Conference regular season champion. Look at that coaching staff. There is certainly your coach of the year in the conference, Ray Lopes. First the fan, first the assistant coaches. 
Then the family, he'll be joining us at our broadcast position for a post-game interview with Randy Rosenblum, who is out there now. I got him. Coach, it hasn't been season long. You win it in double overtime. This is a great accomplishment for your basketball team and for you personally as a head coach and coaching staff. Well, we take out the personal stuff. I'm just so proud of these players and this group of kids. Damon Jackson once again steps up and, and you know gives us life, gives us a chance, and then uh, you know, our crowd was great. You know, if this was not the most memorable game in Selling Arena, being the last time we'd be in here, I don't know what game was. I'm just so proud of our players. They picked us to finish fifth. We win the regular season championship, and we still got a lot of basketball to play. You know, we talk so much about the seniors, and they played great. Damon had all the great shots. Felix with some great defensive plays. But Terry Pettis, your point guard, your freshman, and I know you're very close to him, was absolutely.